It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. Uh, back for another week of um, uh, stupid genius. Some That's stupid genius, are, baby. Some stupid you know genius. By okay. the way, it is a, it is. I think it's a thin line between genius and stupidity because the main thing about most geniuses is they have to think that the wild shit that pops in their mind that's 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 so not like what everybody else is thinking can actually work. Right. And then and then going to execute it. It's always crazy until it gets done. Then you're like, oh shit. Yeah. It's like everybody who's ever done anything unique has been called stupid and crazy first. Absolutely. fucking lutely I read something yesterday. They was like Mark Zuckerberg held a meeting for Facebook back in the day and only two people showed up. And those two people are now billionaires along with Mark Zucky B. What you think about Zuckerberg? How do you think he's handling this? Do you think his wife is a spy from China? What is your whole feeling about this? I think that motherfucker, I saw Mark Zuckerberg on CNN the other day, and he was looking at his wife like he was just waiting for her to do something that she didn't have no business doing. Son. You know, that shit was wow. When I saw them on CNN, she was looking at him like, say something, say something, say something no. wrong. Say one you thing see, fucking wrong. You didn't see, like, he, he was like this. Like, she was talking. Yeah. And he was like this. Like, like, right in her face the whole time. Why? I to take Wait, time. why is she talking? Why do we care what Mark Zuckerberg's wife got to say about anything? I, I'm to be honest with you, I didn't pay attention to either one of them. I, I had it on and I listened to him for a little while, but I was like, they weren't offering any new commentary. I thought that they was talking about like, maybe they were. Maybe that's what they were talking about—the misinformation on Facebook and how they're handling it in regards to uh, coronavirus. Because you know, it's all of these conspiracy theories about coronavirus and people spreading different medications that they can use. I, I think that's I think that's what the conversation might have been about. But I'm surprised nobody screenshotted that picture mm. and made a meme that said America looking at China right now. Mm. Because the way he was looking at his wife looks was so crazy. I'm mm. like, God damn. He was I'm almost just... looking at her like, like, don't tell him. Don't tell I... him what, what's really going on. Ah, but were we not right? Didn't China fake some numbers? Didn't China let the whole world get this shit? I gotta say, our uh, our Asian specialist. He didn't step up, did he? No, he did. What he say? Beginning. Yeah, yeah. Chris said that from the beginning. Chris said from the beginning, China was uh fudging the numbers. Really? I thought that was brave of Chris to go against his home country like that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have to understand. Chris is Taiwan, so this is not. He's Taiwanese, so this is not the first time he's gone against mainland China. Taiwan God, went against that. mainland China to become Taiwan. So it's in his blood it's to his resist blood. Okay, China. Okay, okay. You know what so I'm saying? I, I can't really give him that much credit for being brave then. Nah, he's just being Taiwanese. Got you, got you, got you, got you. That's just what he does, you know? But he, yeah, it'd be nice if he maybe uh, yelled a little louder about that shit. Or maybe we kicked him off the mic. That might have been what happened. <laughs> I think we take that might have been us. I think we were like, yo, <laughs> shut up, way, Chris. Hey, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> yo, Everything shut up. Happening now. Listen, we, we might as well get into it. Positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. We the idiots. Because <laughs> everything that's happening now, Chris definitely said was gonna happen. And we literally we said <laughs> to Chris, yo, here, Chris. stop Don't being such it. a downer, yo. Why you gotta be yo, why you gotta be so sad all the time, Chris? <laughs> the fuck? We just try to have fun and tell friend. jokes. <laughs> You're like, Chris, what do you mean the hospitals are going to be overcrowded? Get off. Get out of here. This shit ain't coming nowhere. I know. Yeah. Bro, you, can't even ha you can't even handle Lyme disease. What the fuck you know about Corona, you know about Chris? Corona. Go beat it, bro. Think, of course you would think Corona was going to kill everybody. You letting Lyme disease almost kill you. <laughs> you can't handle a little citrus. What the fuck you think Corona going to do, bro? Sorry. That's what it was, man. We really did that shit. Chris was like, okay, laugh now, cry later. I'm like, Chris, you know you live here with us, right? Bro. <laughs> We're all in the same country. Uh, it's so true, man. He gave us the early out and we didn't listen. Well, thank you, Chris. Yo, you see how people are starting to rebel, man. I told you that was going to happen. You can't tell Americans what to do for too long, bro. Yeah, but that shit is bullshit. What you mean? It's not even real. Like, hold on. I, I actually had an article about that shit because I did Donkey of the Day yesterday. I gave it to uh, the dude from Good Morning America. I can't remember his name. For George, what? Um, 
George Stapanopoli, but like it's it's on like 80, 80, like it's like 81 percent of 85 percent of the country agrees with the stay at home order. So those people that are protesting are really the minority. Right. And it's like, yo, you got all of these news outlets giving them so much media attention. And, you know, you got the no, president tweeting okay. about them and it's, it works for the it works for the president because the president wants to get the country back open, too. So if the president can make it look like, you know, there's so much unrest out there, so much civil unrest. So we got to get these people back to work or things are about to get crazy. That's why he's tweeting out shit like liberate Michigan and liberate such and such. Yeah. He, he wants to give the illusion that people want to get back to work but sadly mm -hmm. a lot of people in america they do want to get back to work but they give a fuck about their health and their lives first and foremost you want to know some wild shit bro talk to me i didn't do a piece i didn't do a piece on it because i wasn't sure where it came from at the moment right okay. but so uh my boy mark that works with us he found this reddit thread right where it turns out you know the protests there were in Michigan, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, right? Those yep, are the four three. Places. There was yep. a four places, right? So he found this Reddit thread where the dude was looking into these protests and found out that the websites funded. The, no, no, not even funded. The websites for the protests were all started at the exact same time. The domains were all purchased yeah. at the exact same time, right? And the Facebook pages for each one of them have the exact same or very similar wording. Right. So we're like, OK, who's doing this? And the only reason I didn't do a piece on it is because I was like, I don't know who I don't know if this is China wanting to continue to cripple our economy. So they want us to kind of go out there and have more people catch Corona. And then, you know, the hospitals are all fucked and everybody's fucked. Or this is Trump trying to get the business rolling again. I wasn't sure which person it was. But uh, Alex told me today that the Daily came out and they found out that like someone who was associated with the websites being opened was now put on the board for reopening America by Trump. So it it looks like there's a lot of information out there to support that Trump tried to start what's called an astroturf uh, movement, you know, a grassroots movement. An astroturf movement is when you fake a grassroots movement. So they're basically saying yes. the Trump organization tried to do an astroturf movement to get people to reopen America and, you yep. know, if uh, whatever you will. And... Um, I'm gonna send you the article. I should have sent it to you yesterday, but it's a it's a Vox article, and the headline is "America doesn't want another Tea Party." And, and it's, don't let Fox News fool you. 81% of Americans do not share the views of anti-quarantine protesters. They actually have all of that in there. They have exactly what you just said. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you the exact um the exact people that are funding this shit. I mean, I'm I'm always uh, Vox might be right here. I'm always very skeptical of Vox, uh, Vox and Fox and CNN, like the super biased uh, media outlets. Yeah. But um, but yeah, uh, you three know, pro, three three pro gun groups are behind the largest Facebook group encouraging the protests. Right. Uh, that's according to an investigation by the Washington Post in Michigan, a group funded by uh, Betsy DeVos. Uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, they helped to get the word out. Exactly. And, and it's it not did, exactly DeVos, but it's someone related to DeVos. And that's the thing about... Group, it's a group funded by her. Yeah, a group that is funded by her is the one that yeah. did it. But the way that wording looks like she gave the money and then they did it with that money. It's just a group she My has ass. supported in the past. Whatever. I mean, this pay, is... You this gotta, this, gotta this, pay people for their work. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is just how Vox works and all these fucking hacked... Uh, journalist. By person, the way, but. it's very easy to pay some people to do some shit like this right now. Though. Yeah, I people mean, need money. <laughs> people need. They need money. Yeah. And you get to give you a twelve hundred dollars stimulus check and a little bit under the table, and all I got to do is go stand out here with a fucking sign. Yo, realistically, people want to leave the house. Let's be honest. And the second they see their bank account dwindling, they haven't paid some rent. They're like, I want to go back to work, motherfucker. You got to let me go back to work. You're not gonna sit me in my house, not pay me. After that twelve hundred dollars, not pay me anymore, and I just got to sit here and starve because you say so. That Americans do not like being told what to do. You got to trick us into doing shit. You definitely got to trick us into doing shit, man. That's why I think you know. For me, damn, we don't have a lot of positively brilliant today. I got a, you know, I this, got a good positively whole, brilliant, but we'll get to it next. But I got a good okay. one. But just the whole the whole concept of you know wanting getting getting back to work right now i just wanting the economy to open up is fucking stupid because you've already scared us to death you scared us into a corner right mm. so being that you scared us into a corner 
You think you're just going to turn the lights back on and say, OK, everything's good now. Mm. No, mm. motherfuckers is still going to be very, very, very cautious. They're not yeah. going to just rush out there and start going to restaurants again. They're not going to just rush out there and start going to the gym again. They're not going to just rush out there and start going to fucking bars and shit again. So how is the economy going to recover? If motherfuckers don't even feel comfortable being out there yet. I'm, I'm not going to lie, bro. The second they open up those bars, motherfuckers are going to be there. And they're going to bring their own straw. And they're going to stick that <laughs> shit right into the drink. And they're going to drink that motherfucker. Dude, I, there is a bar in my neighborhood that has to-go drinks. And people go to the bar. They hang out outside the bar. It's right there on 7th Avenue. They hang out outside the bar. They get the to-go drink. And then they all basically recreate the bar outside of the bar. And you pay via Venmo so there's no exchange of cash or anything. I'm telling you, man, people cannot wait to reconnect. Yeah. People don't want to be on Babyface and Teddy Riley's Instagram live, bro. They want to be out there listening to live music, literally live. Yeah, but that shit ain't happening. Them large crowds and shit, that shit ain't happening. They're not letting that go down. Even, even these states that are reopening, they ain't letting that shit go down. They ain't like they saying, okay, you can do concerts and all that shit. Like even Atlanta not opening the clubs. Atlanta just doing restaurants, gyms, barbershops, hair salons. Like that club shit is dead. Yeah, oh, man. Wow. I was, yeah, I was talking to a buddy of mine who owns a bunch of clubs up in Boston. And he said, yo, we're all shut down, man. And we don't know when we're shut coming back. Shut the fuck down. It's crazy to think about, like, think about how many people we know that just, they're like bottle service waitresses or they're bartenders, they're waiter. Like, so many people are in the service industry in America, man. I wonder if the majority of jobs in America are service related. I really wonder that well, shit. Because well, we're not I mean, making the- nothing. That's one of the things, right? Like, that's why it affects certain communities so differently, right? Like, you got community, you got the black community, they have unstable, shaky jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these communities have unstable, shaky jobs. Yeah. Bartending is a, bartending may seem consistent until it's not. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now you got an OnlyFans page. Yeah. Now you got to show me those, now you got to show me those titties I've been trying to pay you to show me all of these years. Bro. You know what and I? You didn't want to. Now you got to get on OnlyFans and show them to me <laughs> for the low, low. <laughs> That's Yo, I'm we are getting titties for the low, bro. We're getting titties for the low. Bro, it's sad, bro. Even, yo, even, even dicks. Huh? Safari out here, $20. You can see his cock. $20, he's showing you his dick? $20, Casanova out here for 50 Shit nasty out here in these streets early. I didn't think it was going to get... This bad this early, man. Did you pay for it? Or are you just looking at the blurred image? I'm just listening to them promote. Say what? I'm just listening to, listening to them promote on their Instagram. What are I'm they doing? To Casanova and Safari promote. They had a nice little cross promotion going this week. Are they crossing swords? No, man. And shut up. They, they, <laughs> they, Casanova Two was, times. Casanova, Casanova was saying how he got rich nigga dick. And you got to pay to see this rich nigga dick. Really? So Safari did a PSA. And Safari was like, that's fucked up that Casanova charges so much because he know people out here hurting and ain't really making no money. So my shit is $20. <laughs> this shit is really happening out so here. So what shit. I don't understand is, do you pay the $20 and then people continue to pay to see the same dick? That's a good question. Taylor, I know you've seen it. <laughs> Taylor, how does that work? Wait, what was the question? Like, How does that with- work on OnlyFans when you want to pay for dick? Yeah, um, yeah. I've never been on OnlyFans. You're so a liar. I haven't. All right, let's say, let's say, for example, maybe someone could explain this to us, but like with something like nudity, once you see it, you've seen it. Right? Is he gonna Well, I have a friend that's on it. Say again? I have a friend that's on fans only. How much she charging? So she was a like a stripper and then she became a fans only. Only fans, only fans, bro. <laughs> um, and Son, she gets you, a lot of money. You just learned English. She pays, she gets a lot of money. <laughs> what? <laughs> fans only? What is it called? Only fans. It's the same thing. It's not the same thing. You're saying the same thing, saying fans it's not only. not the same only thing. Fans. Only fans and fans only. If you tell me to go to fans only, I'll be on fucking line Googling fans only and can't find this shit. Exactly. What is- I'm saying the statement is the same thing, though. What fans I'm, only or all right, only fans. All right. Fair enough. What I'm saying is they're going to have to start doing cool things with their dicks if they want us to pay every month. Like, you're going to have to turn your dick into, like, a poodle or something. You have to do some, like, you know, balloon puppetry you're gonna I'm have sure to do guys, things if we're gonna continue paying. Start talking dirty and have I don't know. 
I don't know why they do that though, because people go on Pornhub and watch that. Just perform naked. But what are what is Safari going to perform? Like, what is he going to do? I don't know. Casanova could do um niggas trying to stuck niggas trying to touch all on my cock. Boom boom boom. Boom boom. Bitches want to touch all on my cock. Boom boom boom. Why would you start with dudes? Why would you start with dudes? <laughs> That's the song. The song is niggas want to hit me. No, niggas want to take me. Niggas want to stick me for my watch. But that's what he should do. That's yo. All jokes aside, Casanova. Oh, that's the move. This bitches is want to bitches trying to take me. No, niggas want to stick me for my Glock. Bitches trying to stick me for my Glock or cock, whatever the fuck. This Wait, is Glock no, I got it. I got it. He goes. Well, I okay. can't say the word. I'll go. Bitches trying to stick me for my watch. And what he does is he wraps his dick around his wrist. Right? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. There you go. There you go, Mister Two Times. <laughs> that part of my penis get that part of my pee get that's <laughs> that part of my pee get go ahead yo that's the move Cass do that that'd be sweet is he my, circumcised my god Cass what? what'd you say is he a different coach like is he just black or is he like something else he might have a circum- Taylor your audio is trash your audio is uncircumcised He's a salute to my guy, casting over though. Um, what else we got? What else we got for positively? You say you had a positively brilliant show. Positively brilliant, Jerry Krause. Oh, tell me why? Because I think he's a fucking idiot. Jerry Krause, positively brilliant, undeniably positively brilliant. Has to be one of the greatest GMs ever. And the reason I say that, and I understand he's the villain in the documentary. I'm okay with him being the villain in the documentary. That being said, he did something that most GMs don't get. Now, a GM's job in the NBA, obviously we're talking about the GM for the Chicago Bulls. There's the Last Dance documentary out right now. We don't right? have time for people who didn't watch it. You're right. Six right. million people watched them. They're fucking idiots if they weren't there. You're right. You're right. I'm moving on. Okay? So, a GM's job is not to assess the talent of all-star players. You and I could sit here and go, uh, Anthony Davis is great. LeBron James is great. Giannis Antetokounmpo is great. It doesn't take a genius to do that shit. The, the GM's job is to assess the talent of role players and players to fit around your star, not the star. Star talent is the easiest thing to assess. And Jerry Krause beautifully built a team around MJ that enabled him to have more success than any player in modern history. He found players that were not only skilled, but egoless so that they could coincide with a Michael Jordan players that could handle him. And most importantly, a coach that had a strategy that could handle all the egos that he was potentially putting together and the most important ego, which was Michael Jordan. So you got to give some credit for Jerry. I understand he's a villain in this and I understand his, his ego ultimately was the demise of the bulls, but you got to give credit where credit is due. This guy built a magnificent um team. I, I listen. I, I think he traded think, for Scottie Pippen. We don't even know the guy that he traded for him. You know, he finds Tony Kukoc. He finds he trade for Scotty. Olden for Olden Scottie. Price or something like that, or some yeah. weird fucking. But it's like Olden Polonies. Olden Polonies. Oh, Olden Polonies. Oh, Olden Polonies was good. No, I don't, he wasn't. I don't. Remember. He wasn't. I mean, he wasn't a superstar, all star, but he was solid. All I'm saying is he found a way. Apparently, he had like way uh, advanced. Well, now everybody does it, but he had advanced like analytics and like uh, scouting strategies. He was looking at like arm length. He was looking at shuttle speed. He was trying to find a way to get some sort of like competitive advantage in the scouting game. And I got to give him credit. The one knock on him is he wasn't part of the organization to draft Jordan. If he was part of the organization to draft Jordan and he drafts Jordan and puts that team together around him, you got to give it up. No, I think you give Jerry Krause all the credit in the world, but I think the problem with, um, Jerry Krause and why he doesn't get the credit is because I think that we all tend to forget how important the end is. I keep telling y'all that, man. You got to plan all the way until the end. Yes. Like it, 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 it doesn't matter. You, you could be doing everything right until you get to that very end and fuck it up. Like, yo, we don't remember that the Atlanta Falcons was kicking the Patriots ass for three quarters. Yeah. You remember the end. Yeah. Jerry Krause did not land the plane well. And, and and what's sad about that whole situation is he, what you said is true. 
Yes, he did find these players that didn't have an ego and could work around Jordan. Even though I found it interesting in the doc that Scottie Pippen came in thinking it was going to be his team. But he said he realized in the very first year that wasn't going to be the thing. But it was, it, it was impressive that he found all these people who didn't have egos and, and worked around Michael. But he ultimately let his ego be the end of a fucking dynasty. Yes. So the Bulls, the Bulls absolutely probably would have won two more rings. As many more as MJ wanted to win, essentially. And I think the way that they I were... Agree. I think the way that they were looking at it, and again, this is why... Obviously, there was beef between him and Phil Jackson, et cetera. But this is why coaches make horrible front office um, employees, if you will. They make hor horrible executives. Like Doc Rivers, amazing coach. Then he goes to be the exec, and he's shitty at the exec, right? You don't want them in the front office because coaches think in the now. They're like, how do I win in this moment? Front office guys have to think about the longevity of the franchise. So they're going to have to cut some corners. They're going to have to make some moves that the coach might not like. But, but they, it's actually putting that team in a better situation for the long run. And I think they were basically looking at, I assume Reinsdorf and Krauss are looking at the Bulls and going, look, we're already paying MJ $36 million. Scotty's going to ask for $20 million. I think at the point, at that point in time, the, the salary cap was less than Jordan was making, no? I think we could look that up. Chris, what was the I salary think, cap? I think, I think the fact that the salary cap changed is why uh, Jordan was able to get paid so much fucking money. No, but he was above it. When he was making 36, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was 32. He made 30. He made 31 year and 32 the next year because he only had two $30 million seasons. He got two $30 million seasons, but yeah. I think at that time, the salary cap was only $26 million. Am I wrong? Okay. I don't know. That, sound, that sounds right to me. I'm not, it, and listen, I'm not an exec, but I, I think you sign. I'm looking it up to right now. But go on. You keep signing. You keep signing Jordan the one year deals. Or maybe you even keep signing Scotty the one year deals. Like yo, Jordan said the illest shit on that on that documentary. Jordan said we should be allowed to defend What's, our championship yeah. until we can't defend our championship no more. You know what I'm saying? Like no executive should say when this shit is over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like yo, when we go out there and we start getting our ass kicked. Then you decide you want to make decisions. But until then, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, like, no. Yo, yo, they literally, and I never understood that. That's why this documentary is so intriguing to me. Why? Why? I want to know what happened with Phil Jackson and Jerry Krause. And hey, listen, by the way, you know who should be positively brilliant? Jerry fucking Reinsdorf or whatever his name is. You the owner, but mm -hmm. yet your hands are completely clean. Oh, like, nothing happens without you. He threw he threw Jerry Krause under that bus so goddamn fast, bro. <laughs> I cannot even tell you how fast he threw Krause under that bus, bro. Because nothing happens without the owner. Exactly. Nothing. 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 The owner co-signed on every fucking thing. But yet, just because this guy is short and chubby, he's easier to blame. And and keep in mind, when him and Krause disagreed about hiring Phil Jackson back. What did what did Reinsdorf do? He flew yeah, to he Montana. Go look like the hero. He flew to Montana to go talk to Phil and ask him to do one more year. One year, not not, not sign him to a long term deal. Right. One year. I one think year to what? My assumption. Just, my assumption is that they knew that Jordan wasn't coming back after that year. So Phil's like, I don't want to rebuild. I'm good on all that. No, Jordan said it. Jordan said he told them, I am not playing for another coach. Y'all get rid of Phil Jackson. I'm not going to be here. Mm -hmm. And he said, he said on the documentary, he was like, I shouldn't be put in a position where I have to go through that. But I think, so I think he said that the year before, right? He, no, said, he that, said that. He said that 96. So the, yeah, exactly. Oh, it, was right, it, was, it was right after they won the fifth championship going into the next year. Exactly. Right. So they, there was questions whether Phil was going to come back for that, for that sixth championship year. There were questions whether he was going to come back. And that's when Reinsdorf went to Montana. But I don't know if, if Jordan himself was committing past that year. I think Jordan already had the idea, like, I think this might be it. We three-peat, we get out of here, and then I retire. That's that's what I'm assuming. Maybe we learn more. Yeah, I don't – maybe it seemed to me like Phil wasn't going to be there, and so Jordan knew he wasn't going to be Yo, there. Yo, son, Phil wasn't gonna be you there. know what? And you have you probably know this more than anybody because you've existed in um, – you've existed in entertainment where egos bounce back and forth against each other. Ego yep. rarely – exists in an isolated moment, right? Ego usually starts to flame and pop up when there's a bunch of different egos bouncing into each other. Absolutely. So, so right, so it's, I don't think it's like it's just Krause. I think you got Jordan's ego, which is deserved. You got Phil's ego, and I think Phil was getting a lot of the credit 
that Kraus wanted himself. Kraus is looking at Phil like, motherfucker, nobody even knew who you were. And I plucked you out of obscurity. And then I so give the you Michael what? Jordan. No, you I, did your job, Jerry. Of course. That motherfucker. <laughs> you did your job. So not everybody's egoless, bro. That's the thing. Like, it's easy to be egoless in certain situations and not egoless in others. Jerry just wanted a fucking shout out. He, and you know what? That's why Literally, that's all he wanted. And that's why I fucking criticized Phil Jackson because Phil couldn't do it. Phil has so much fucking ego himself. He calls himself the Zen master, but that motherfucker got so much goddamn ego. You need to kiss the ring for everything. Make Shaq fly out to Montana and move a fucking log in the middle of a lake for no reason. Right? It's like... He got so much ego, he couldn't just go, hey, I wouldn't be here without Jerry. Hey, Jerry did a great job building his team. Hey, he Jerry that, found these players. Nah, I be. Yeah, he he wasn't that. saying he was like, it. You said, you know what it was, though? Like, Phil would say it straight out. Jordan would say it, but then give him a backhanded compliment. Like, yo, even at the, yo, even at Jordan's Hall of Fame speech, Jordan was like, I, w- I went back and rewatched it, right? Just for better context now, because yeah. the, the two-part documentary. Jordan said, Jerry Krause is here. I don't know who the fuck invited him. I didn't. And then came back to what he said in the doc about organizations not, you know, being responsible for the fucking championships that the team wins. I was like, wow. He said, he said, he said, we give them a little credit because they got to pay us. But we the ones out there playing fucking ball. Yo, but on some level, don't we agree with what he said? As a Knicks fan, the New York Knicks are trying to get Dolan to sell the team every single year because we're basically saying, hey, organizations win championships and the leader of this organization sucks so we won't win one while he's there so on some level we agree with Krause it depends though because you can have like I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan so I feel like our owner gets in the way but we always have the talent I feel like the owner gets in the way because the owner's trying to do too much so then you agree so then organizations win championships or they don't it's not the uh, players you think, see, you got the players uh, but our, your organization sucks not, so they not, can't not execute def- definitely players though because I mean you can Mark Cuban is a great, great, great fucking owner of a, a fuck franchise. Everybody talks about how good Dallas is and how beautiful the locker rooms are yep. and how well they get treated. They got one championship. Son, they got one, though. They still got one. Eh. They, they, no, no, no. You can't. Eh. You know, that is you the know, promised land. You, know you took the them bar, to the promised you know land. the bar for NBA owners? What? Jerry fucking Buss. Everybody loves Jerry Buss. The players love Jerry Buss. The fans love Jerry Buss. Like Jerry was the guy. Yep. Jerry Buss is the is the bar for owners. Jerry sat way up in the fucking stands, minded his business, never was in front of the cameras like that. Hired somebody like Jerry West, who was a fucking super genius, mm-hmm. right? To put together the team and stayed out of the way. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how you should be as an owner. Like, why would you care? As long as your team is winning and you making money and the stands are full, why do you give a fuck? Like, why did Jerry Krause care that much? That shit, Jerry Krause needed a therapist. God bless the dead. Jerry Krause needed a therapist. Yes. Jerry Krause suffered from being short and fat and having to be around all those tall motherfuckers. That, yeah. Can you imagine how cruel? Look how cruel God can be sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 God gives you this ability to have this 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 vision for talent, but you gotta be around the most triggering thing that has bothered you your whole fucking yeah, life. Yeah. Is that not a test from? Is that not God testing you? That's God testing you, bro. Man, you got this vision to bring all of these great players on this basketball court, but you have to be there with six foot eight, seven feet people, and you four nine, and you've been getting teased about this your whole. Life, yeah, he failed that test miserably. If you ask me, bad. He failed it bad. bad. He was good. He was good at first. It's all about how you end, man. You can't let your ego end over short jokes. Hundred percent. No, no, you're right, and and it is. Yeah, it's a testament to what ego can do, man. Ego can get you places, but it can also, you know, take those places away from you. A you- short man cut a dynasty short. <laughs> That's what the fuck happened, bro. Hundred percent. Now I do have a uh, what a fucking idiot. Talk to me, Scotty Pippen. What a fucking idiot. Not yeah. for signing the deal because he was underpaid, but it wasn't that far off from what Jordan was making around that time. Before Jordan, Jordan made, Jordan made eight. Jordan had an eight-year, twenty-five million dollar deal. Yeah, so he was making four million, I think, at the end of that deal. 
And then Scotty was Jordan's making first, Jordan's first championship. He was making two point five million dollars. Exactly right. So they were making so much fucking money on this guy. The only reason NBA players are getting paid what they're paid right now is because of Jordan, right? Like yeah. the way that all these people are making money off Jordan is absurd. You know. Um, that being said, that being said, Scottie Pippen, if you sign the contract. That's what you agree to get paid, okay? If you underperform your contract, you don't give money back. Charlotte, when you first signed a contract with uh, iHeartRadio, you know, and the show wasn't doing great uh, in the beginning, you weren't going to iHeartRadio, I'd like to give you back a portion of this contract. We're not uh, doing as well as we thought we did, right? Yeah. You're like, this is what you agreed to pay me, so you better fucking pay me for it. And then when it was time to sign a new contract, then you hit them over the fucking head because you go, look what I did. But to bitch out in your last year, that was some sad, over a contract that you decided to sign, that was some sad shit, B. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's no, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, uh, there's, no, there's no middle ground when it comes to long-term deals because you could be underselling or they, or, 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 or they could be overselling. You know what I'm saying? Like you just don't know. Like you do a you do a long term deal. You hope to have success by the end of that deal. You can't go to them and say, "Hey, you know, y'all need to restructure. Y'all need to renegotiate." It's your last year. Mm -hmm. Play it out, ball the fuck out, and stick them up. That's the whole point. Stick like them you, up. Stick them up. You know what you've done there the past eight years. You know what you've you know you know that y'all have won six championships. They want you back. Stick them up. And guess what? If they don't, you are gonna get that money elsewhere because that's what he ended up doing anyway. Scotty wouldn't got paid. I think Scotty next deal was like $60 million over three years with either, I think it was Houston. He, I mean, he was Portland. with Houston. Bro, Scotty Pippen made more money than Michael Jordan during their playing Scottie careers. He made more money. Yeah. Scotty Scotty ultimately made more money in the NBA than Michael Jordan did. But that's just long I couldn't term believe deals are tricky, it, bro. man. I couldn't believe it. All these people on Twitter that just accepted a $1,200 stimulus check talking about, we need to do a GoFundMe for Scotty <laughs> Pippen. Fuck out of here, bro. Listen, Sit I down. I totally understand. <laughs> I totally understand why Scotty signed the deal. You know, you're a young kid from Arkansas. They offer you $18 million guaranteed. You've never seen that kind of money in your life. It's an eight-year deal. Yeah, you would sign it. You know what I'm saying? But I thought Jerry, uh, Jerry, what's his fucking name? Ryan Osdorf. What's his name? <laughs> what is it? Ryan Sdorf. <laughs> Jerry Ryan Sdorf was slick in that moment, too. Hey, I wouldn't sign that if I were you. You, you think wanted a motherfucker. You wanted him, but... You're not really warning him. You think you really you think he really said that shit? Do you really think he said to a player, take more money? Ask me for more money? Well, no, he didn't say more money. He just told him to sign a short-term deal. I don't think he ever said that. I think he was like, ooh, okay. I think Pippen, I think Pippen would have pushed back if he didn't. I don't think Pippen would let that lie fly out there. Not for this documentary like that. Right. And, but by the way, I think Jerry Reinsdorf is. Yo, he's the master at keeping his hands clean. Yeah. Because in the future, when Scotty's mad, he could be like, I told you. I told you not to sign that. Either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the master at keeping his fucking hands clean. But like I said, long-term deals are tricky because, yo, you don't know where you're going to be at five years from now. You don't know where you're going to be at eight years from now. I guarantee you, if you're actually a great talent, you should be appreciating with value. And by the time you're... You know, last year your your deal comes, they should you should be underpaid severely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause now it's and, renegotiation. Now. And think about it, right? Like back in the day when the salary cap was twelve million dollars or something like that, that means the entire team gotta get paid out of the twelve million dollars. The only way you could actually make a lot of money was a long term deal. So it's not like they were abusing him when they first when Scotty first signed the deal Jordan didn't revolutionize basketball around the world just yet by the end of the deal Jordan has changed basketball forever so of course you won't get paid more but if you sign that deal initially and there is no Michael Jordan by the end of that deal you're actually getting paid well you're not when that upset sign, when did he sign it I know the eight year deal when, so he had to sign it like right before their first championship or maybe right after I thought it was, it was right after maybe their first championship. But and was it eight years or was it six years, eighteen million, something like that? I think that was eight years, or seven, seven years, years seven million. years, eighteen, right? Seven, seven years, years 18. eighteen million. Jordan, Jordan was eight years, twenty five million. Uh, and you that, know that's why Jordan. Everybody was mad at Jordan, saying Jordan should have stuck up for Scotty. All Jordan was saying basically was like, "I did the same shit." 
I did the same shit. Yeah. I paid my dues. I did the same thing. I had an eight year, 25 million deal. Play your, play your shit out and stick these motherfuckers up. Yeah. God, I was so impressed by how professional Jordan was, man. Like, what a, what a fucking brilliant, brilliant, like emotionally brilliant guy. Did you ever see him waver even slightly in any interview? Like, you look at these guys now today, like a Draymond Green, literally cannot control his emotions for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Hey, how do you feel about Kevin Garnett? It's like you couldn't button that up for 30 fucking seconds and Jordan out here with every camera in the world on him for fucking 10 years and never once do you see him slip up? <laughs> no, we can't say that. When he slip up? That goddamn Jordan crying face me. That motherfucker, <laughs> he was past the point of holding his emotions in after when that shit happened. No, I'm talking about during the career, during the playing career. Oh, no, 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 no. During his career, no. Jordan... His emotional IQ is so high. Bro. And to your point about Draymond and them, Jordan had one thing that a lot of these brothers, these young brothers lack. Security. High self-esteem. You mm. know what I'm saying? These brothers are insecure and they have low self-esteem. Every little thing gets to them. Because yeah. in their heart of hearts, they feel like the man because they're getting the money. They might have won a couple of rings. But they're always constantly being questioned. Mm. They're always looking at the shit that's being said about them on social media. So they can't unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, say, suck my dick, I'm the man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you something else that Jordan does. When Jordan is getting his ass kicked, when he's feeling that pressure, he goes and does something about it. You know what he does about it? He takes things into his own hands. Mm. He internalizes it in his mind and in his heart. When the, you, you'll, you'll see when, the, when they show the Pistons kicking his ass. Fuck, I, I got to get stronger. Mm. Not, hey, Mr. Referee, stop letting these fucking motherfuckers beat up on me. And if you are letting them beat up on me, watch what the fuck I do. Go fucking get strong. Yeah. So now I can go kick their ass the next fucking year. Uh, uh, the fucking coach from North Carolina, Roy, um, Roy Williams. Roy Williams. Roy Williams was saying how... He said to Michael Jordan, Michael, he said to Michael Jordan, uh, Michael Jordan told him, I'm going to be the hardest, the hardest Worker. person that works here or some shit like that. And, 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 and Roy was like, I forgot what Roy said. Whatever the fuck Roy said, Jordan was like, I bet you nobody will outwork me. And he Roy said, said I want to be the best player in North Carolina or something like that. And he goes, well, you got to work hard. He goes, he goes, I worked as hard as anybody else in high school. He goes, oh, oh I thought you said you wanted to be the best. Player. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, nobody here outworked me, and he, Roy said, nobody outworked him. Yeah, like yo, that's what it's about. At the end of the day, that's the most beautiful thing about Michael Jordan, man. Doubling the fuck down on yourself. Mm. Fuck everything else. The only thing you can control is you. You want to get stronger? Go get stronger. You want to get a better jump shot? Go work on that motherfucker. Like you want to be the best and make a decision in your mind that you want to be the best and go fucking put some action towards being the goddamn best. I don't want to hear all these fucking excuses, I love it. man. I don't like that shit. Joe. That's I why I like Joe. Joe didn't make no excuses. Nothing. Just None. go out there and do it, man. It was, you know, it was really cool to see. Um, I had never heard his parents speak. Really? I'd never heard his parent parents speak. I obviously heard of his parents, but his parents were so fucking sharp. Right, like when you when you interviewed the mom, a beautiful woman, by the way, to this day, right? Interview the dad. They're both really fucking sharp, right? They're so composed, and it's like you grow up in that environment, you cannot help but take on those qualities and those abilities. Absolutely. Right? Like his mom was so comfortable in front of the camera. Granted, she's probably been in front of the camera for the last you know forty years or thirty years or something like that. But like even telling stories, talking this, that, the other, no nerves. Cool, calm, collected. I mean, I think you you must absorb some of that. And it speaks to how Jordan so easily handled the pressure of the media and the pressure of all these things, you know? I'm going to tell you something else, too. I think another reason that Jordan was able to handle the pressure is because he really didn't have no pressure coming in. Because he, ah, he wasn't in the yeah. guy. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't come in the number one draft pick that was going to change the league and revolutionize the league. Like, a lot of that shit that he was doing early on was just really trying to show that he belonged. Yeah. You know, he said that in his Hall of Fame speech. He was like, yo, I had to think, he, he think Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, 
uh, George Iceman Gervin, I believe it was, because he said he just always wanted to show that he belonged amongst them. You know what I mean? So he was like, even when they the room was about them trying to freeze him out, he was like, I didn't know if they were true or not. He was like, I didn't care. I just wanted to show that I belonged. I just thought that, man, I'm going to tell you something, yo. I, I can't think of too many Michael Jordans in any profession. There's a reason why greatness is synonymous with Michael Jordan. There's a reason why if you are great at what you do, you are the Michael Jordan of that thing. I don't even think greatness is a strong enough word for Michael. Why do you think Larry Bird said it's God disguised as Michael Jordan? I'm telling you, bro, because it wasn't even about the fact that Michael scored a bunch of points. Mad mad motherfucker scored points. It was the fact that when he said, I'm going to win, he won. Like, we're going to win this game. Like, like, we talk about that shit, like the will to win, willing your team to win. Mm -hmm. That shit takes more than just hope. (laughs) I don't know. Dog. It's almost like he just got a switch in him, like. Life is so unpredictable. Look at this shit we're in right now. You know what I mean? None, nobody could have predicted this thing in the world, right? Nobody. Every time you make a plan, God laughs at you. They're like, oh, you think <laughs> you think you could make plans, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I think we're drawn to these figures. We're drawn to these people that make declarations and then execute on the declarations. Execute. Floyd Mayweather, say seem, whatever you it, want. Say again? It makes them seem like they're larger than life. It makes them seem godlike when they do that. Dude, it's like they're telling the future. I remember my father, he uh, used to work in the news business, and he interviewed Muhammad Ali before he was going to fight uh, George Foreman, right? And he's in Ali's locker room, and he goes, how are you going to beat this guy? This guy is a monster. I mean, he's not only knocking people out, he's destroying them. He's knocking them off the like up off the canvas and then they'll fall down. I think that's what he did to Frazier when Foreman knocked out Frazier. And then uh Ali goes to my dad, he goes, uh he goes, you have to understand, like I'm a cerebral fighter. This is a science to me. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna beat him up here. I'm gonna pick him apart and then I'm gonna knock him out. I'm pretty sure he called that he was gonna knock him out. And my dad who's yeah, just, it was a red, he called around. He definitely did, called around. He might even call it my dad is the biggest Ali fan. You know, but he's still like, there's just no way. He's a big boxing fan. And then you go see someone call out the most absurd thing in the world and then execute on it. They become God like Joe Namath. I don't even know if he was a good uh, quarterback or not, but he said that the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl and they fucking did it right against all odds. And now he is involved in football lore forever. If you can call yeah, it out and yeah. execute. Yeah, people can tell that story. I mean, even when they showed in the documentary on Michael was playing fucking golf with Danny Ainge and he told DJ, yo, tell your boy I got something for him tonight. Mm. That's after dropping 49, gave him 60 fucking three. Like, I don't know, man. Michael Jordan just different. And no disrespect to LeBron. Stop, stop it. There's no comparison to Michael Jordan. Michael is in rare air, no pun intended. Like, there is nothing that has ever been on the basketball court like Michael Jordan. I think you're doing a discredit to not only Michael Jordan's legacy when you try to compare him to LeBron, you're doing a disservice to LeBron. Because, by the way, I salute LeBron because LeBron had a lot of the things Jordan didn't have, meaning he came into the league with so much pressure. Mm. The league wanted another fucking chosen one. Mm. You know, he was the king. And he, for all intents and purposes, he lived up that he li- he exceeded expectations, exceeded. I think. Exceeded. Unbelievable what LeBron I has think done. so. Unbelievable. I, I, think, I would say, I would definitely say so. Three championships, yeah. been to the finals nine times, you know, never gotten any fucking trouble. Like he fucking did his goddamn thing. You can't you can't take nothing away from LeBron James, but Michael Jordan, he is not. And guess what? He's not supposed to be. Neither is Kobe. Kobe not supposed to be. Like Yo, they're, they're all you're right. their own individual collective, you know, group of stars. That goddamn Michael Jordan, bro. You know what I've I've realized after watching this is that Kobe was closer to Jordan than LeBron is. Yes. And I ranked Bron over Kobe, I think. But after seeing it, the way that they view life and the way they view the game, like something that was really poignant that happened in the documentary, right? Um, this, I think Jordan at some point just goes, uh, what I care about is winning and at winning at all costs. And that is a thing that drives me. And that's what I want to do. And I remember, uh, there, 
there are times that, like, you know, LeBron has said stuff like, well, I don't want to play if there's no fans there because I play for the fans. and uh, Or, hey, if I don't win another championship, everything's good. You know, life is good. I feel so accomplished with everything I've did in the NBA, which is great. Don't get me wrong. That is great that you feel accomplished and you should feel accomplished. But that is not the mentality of Jordan. The mentality of Jordan is I don't care if nobody's in the stands. Whoever I am playing, it doesn't matter what part of the world. I don't care if it's a, a fucking pickup basketball game in France. I don't care if it's a shooting drill in front of a bunch of campers. And if I miss one shot, none of them get sneakers. Or if I miss one shot, they all get sneakers. He yep. will win at all costs. And that is what separates him. He said he had a love of the game clause. I don't know if that was true. What's that? At his Hall of Fame speech, he said he had a love of the game clause in his contract, meaning that he can play basketball anytime, any fucking where he wanted to. Uh, Pick up games, all of that shit. He, if you go back and watch his Hall of Fame speech, he was talking about Doug Collins and how, you know, when he got hurt that time, Doug, like, and he was, you know, training all, all you know, at North Carolina and nobody knew. Um, Doug Collins said some shit about, I don't know if it was Doug Collins, somebody was limiting his minutes or whatever. And he said to them, like, look, I got a love of the game clause. I think it was Doug Collins he was talking to. He was like, I got a love of the game clause in my contract. I can play ball anytime I want to, wherever I want. Because they know, because he knew they were going to try to limit him to just playing within the facility and practicing there, et cetera. No so. pickup games, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Yo, by the way, that, that that shit you mentioned, the camp shit with Chris Paul, yeah. that's incredible too. Son, it's, it's that's amazing. That's incredible. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a, it, explain the situation so people know what we're referencing. They they were doing like a game of horse, basically. And it was like if you miss a shot, um it wasn't it wasn't shot, horse. It was he had to shoot from every part of the floor. Every part of the floor. And he was like, if you miss one shot, then you gotta give this whole camp Jordan's. Yo, this dude Jordan is Yo, there was one scene where he shot a three-pointer. Chris Paul had his hands in front of his eyes. Yeah, the free throw. Literally had his hands in front of Jordan's <laughs> eyes. Hand like that. Jordan still shot with his hand in the air and it went in. Yeah. Like, yo, this guy is unreal. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that he cares more about winning than giving all those kids sneakers is so fucking funny to me. <laughs> he, probably, he probably still gave those kids sneakers. He just gave him the sneakers based on how I wanted to give them to you. I'm not giving them to you because I love uh... motherfucking Chris Paul. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, that documentary is brilliant. I don't know if it's because we ain't got shit to watch right now. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it is. But that shit, man, you know, yo, I don't think I would appreciate it. It was supposed to come on in June, though, after the season was over. Right. Because I don't think I would appreciate it if it was being aired while basketball was still going on right now. You think? I feel like you would have. I feel like... I feel like if I know you, I know you pretty well, and I think that you're kind of drawn to these figures, like these figures that defy the odds and like they put greatness above everything. I I feel like, regardless of the playoffs, you would be curious about this. Yeah, I mean, listen, I like it for the history lesson more than anything, because I mean, we all lived it, right? Yeah. And when you live it, it's different. But watching it back, it's like, oh shit! Like you almost feel like a sense of gratitude. Like man, I really got to see that in real time. But I like it for the kids more than anything. Because the kids need to see this shit. Yes. Like, we're not just sitting around arguing Jordan is better than LeBron or telling y'all yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah. You don't know what the hell you're talking about just because we older. Yeah. We're saying that shit because you don't know what the fuck we witnessed. So that so that's the thing that's great about this is, is that, um, is that uh, all these people, even like sports analysts, we got to realize so there are sports analysts that are like 26 years old, 27 yes. years old, 28 years old, right? And- these sports analysts that are 26, 27 years old are making statements about whether or not Jordan's the GOAT without ever really witnessing him play basketball. Exactly. And we listen to them and argue with them when we should be saying, sit the fuck down, Junior. Yes. You yes. don't know nothing you, about this. You know what's so crazy? I thought about this, right? Think about guys that are old, like Skip Bayless. I'm talking about these old ass dudes that's like 70 years old. So they, they've been around. They were around with Magic and Bird, Michael, Kobe, LeBron. Right. The reason you should really listen to them is because it's not that they're stuck in their ways. Because there right. was a point in time where the NBA was all about Magic and Larry. Of course. Everybody loved Magic and Larry. They thought Magic and Larry was the bar. Yep. Until Michael came around. Mm -hmm. And you, this guy was just so good, you had to give it up to him. And he right. had such a will to win that you just had to give it up to him. You know what I'm saying? You go to the fucking NBA Finals and you win six of them and don't lose. And the only reason you didn't win is because you re fucking retired. Mm. Like, 
That's unreal. It's a reason people champion Michael Jordan the way that they do, mm. right? So if they say, man, Le- Michael is way better than LeBron. Michael's better than Kobe. It's because they've seen it all. They've seen the whole spectrum. You haven't seen the whole spectrum. Mm-hmm. You saw Braun and Kobe. Recency bias, man. That's what it is. Yes. We yes. all suffer from recency bias. I've suffered for, I've said, I'm sure on this podcast, now nah, LeBron's the best, man. He's the best I've ever seen. But I forgot what Jordan would do, bro. I forgot how terrifying the last eight minutes of the fourth quarter were when Jordan would come back in after his break. And then he just start attacking relentlessly, possession Ooh. after possession after possession. And you just watch your team's league slowly dwindle away. I forgot how bro, fucking Michael horrifying Jordan that was. Jordan was the real-life Rocky, bro. Jordan yeah. was the real-life Hulk Hogan. You know how at the end of Rocky movies, you just knew once that during that second fight, yep. which Jordan never got to. There was no second fights mm-hmm. with Michael. He's knocking you out the first fucking fight, he, yep. right? He wasn't even going the distance with Michael. Let's be clear about that. Yeah. But you just knew Rocky wasn't going to lose. Same thing with Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan getting his ass kicked, and all of a sudden, he just... Yeah. <laughs> Michael yeah. did that in real life. Yep. Real life. Like, this shit ain't... You're not winning this fucking game, yo. And I'm going to tell you something else. You brought this point up a few weeks ago about all the legacies that he erased. This is another good thing that's going to come from this documentary. People can see, people love to say Jordan didn't have no competition. No, you think Jordan didn't have no competition because he erased he fucking it. wiped them all out. Yep. He played against the best. Yep. The best. Charles Barkley and the fucking Phoenix Suns, Carl Malone, John Stockton and the Utah Jazz, Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter and those guys in fucking Portland. Mm-hmm. Are we serious right now? Mm-hmm. Fucking Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. Detroit. Are you fucking serious? Mm-hmm. Sean Kemp and Gary Payton in the Seattle Super Hunt, Super Sonic. These are fucking Hall of Famers, man. Stockton Malone, dude. Come on, man. Yeah. What the fuck are we talking about And here? another thing you got to understand, right, is it like, so Magic Johnson and Larry Bird blow the sport up nationally right so jordan is actually competing with all the kids who came up watching magic and bird all those all you know so it's like when you jordan was competing against a larger talent pool because the sport became so popular nationally because of magic and bird so now you have all these kids that maybe would have tried to play baseball or maybe would have tried to play football or maybe would have tried to do this other shit. They're watching these two guys and they're going, oh my God, I got to play basketball now. I'm putting all my talents in basketball. Jordan got to beat those motherfuckers. Yeah, you know, I, that shit made me think about Magic too. All this talk of contract. People forget to deal with that Magic sign, bro. The one that's to, about saying he had HIV or the one that, to, for the Lakers? No, that was an endorsement deal. I'm talking yeah. about the guy. <laughs> The NBA kind of, Magic Johnson had a 25 year, $25 million deal. But he had a clause in his contract that he gets a front office job. Ah, I didn't know that, he, that that was part of it. Yeah, he had a part, he had a, he had a clause in his contract that he gets, a, that he get a fucking front office job. That's One, interesting. Like, first of all, what NBA player tw- plays 25 years? I don't even think Vince Carter's at 25 years, is he? Nah. So it's like one year, 25, 20, 25 years. That's a million dollars a year, but you get a front office job. It's like, I mean, I get, I get it was the 70s, but God damn. Yeah. Like, no, I mean, was that a lot of money back then, Chris? Yeah. Absolutely. What are you talking about? Okay. So man, so back then to sign a 25-year, $25 million deal, that's a lot of money. But again, but he's, he's doing that shit because that's the only way you can make big money. You're not going to make all that money in one year. You have to spread it out because the salary cap was probably $10 million a year or even less back then when he signed that deal. Sure. NBA was not a big thing back then. And to put in perspective Jordan's legacy, the finals ratings that Jordan had, we don't even touch today. Wow. Think about that. Think about yeah. that. We don't fuck with the finals ratings Jordan had now, and the NBA well, is, is well, big as it's ever been. Though. Say again? All they, had was, all they had was TV back then. True. That being said, when the NBA finals are on, that's what we're watching, right? We're not watching reruns of Friends. We're watching the fucking finals. Yeah, especially back then. And now, though. Um. Yeah, but we're just watching it different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we're watching it on, like, different platforms and shit like that. I just to be honest with you, I just don't know if there's anybody that captures the imagination. I think LeBron's story is always intriguing. So LeBron will always have high ratings. You know what I mean? But I think LeBron, honestly, people like to watch LeBron lose more than win. Yeah. In a lot of ways, he's become this anti-hero. 
and he doesn't want to be an anti-hero, which is the saddest part. It's like I think I think it's the Jordan guys. Oh, because the, the guys, Jordan like guys the, are so the loyal. People that love Jordan and yeah. understand Jordan's greatness. Yeah. So what I'm hoping happens after this documentary too is Jordan's legacy can never be threatened. Yeah. It's just not happening. It's just not. Like there's no there's nothing LeBron or anybody else can do to threaten the legacy of Michael Jordan. Because in order to threaten the legacy of Michael Jordan, you just simply have to be as dominant as Michael was. Yeah. Those guys have not been as dominant as Michael was. They just yeah. haven't. Not throughout the not throughout the whole league for the whole course of their careers. Like, yo, Dirk Nowitzki got a ring on LeBron's watch, bro. Yeah. And on, Co- and on, on Kobe's watch. watch. And on Kobe's watch. On Kobe. Well, let me see. Kobe was... Was that... Didn't they Kobe bounce the Lakers? The- Didn't they bounce the Lakers out? I don't remember. Yeah, the year they lost to Miami in the finals, I think they got they went through LA to get there. They went through LA. Okay, could be. I'm just saying, uh, it's it's real, bro. Dirt got a ring on your watch. Bro. I don't think people understand that it was one of the rarest times in history where if Jordan wanted to win, then he won. Meaning, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's, so it's like usually, you, you know, usually you watch any type of sport, right? And it's very rare that an athlete can make a decision to win or lose that day. In other words, when Jordan lost, it was because he was like, look, I'm tired. I'm not going to put all the effort I need to put in. We got a big game on Friday. I'm going to save a little for Friday. There's a reason why he's... That never happened, though. Say again? That never happened. I'm sure it happened. I'm but sure they, it you know, happened. Mike, I've ne- they, that's what the ill thing about Michael was. He's like, yo, he never took off. Well, there was games where they lost, and I think he was like, listen, I'm not going to go give it all this game if I if if it's not right to give it all. I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy played his ass off every single game. That being said, when the games mattered, for example, the finals, it was unthinkable that Jordan would lose the finals because what he did is he just dug down, he emptied the tank, and he decided that the Bulls were going to win. And no matter what the cost was, he decided it. How many people in history get to just decide the outcome of something? I think we all can do that, man. I mean, that can be that can actually be the deep dive. I think we all can do that. I think that, you know, I had a conversation with Deepak Chopra this week. It's up on my YouTube page. And you know, we were talking about wholeness. Right. And um, can you ever truly achieve wholeness? And Deepak was saying how. I asked him what wholeness feels like, and he got. He said, "You know how athletes would say they're in like the zone. That's one thing they would say about Michael Jordan. He's in the zone. He's in the zone. I think that you can really train your mind to match up with what you want your outcomes in life to be. I think your brain is that powerful of a tool, and I think Michael just tapped into something in his cerebral that all of us can tap into. You just got to have the patience." the dedication and the work ethic to tap into it. Like it's a belief, bro. Like it's a, I, I, I can't explain it. Like when you were on that stage, I guarantee you felt that way. Like I can destroy some shit out here right now. Like anything you say is going to fucking land right now. Like it, it's just a zone that all of us can tap into. I think Michael tapped into that. And I think everybody has the ability to tap into that, but it just takes an extreme, extreme belief in yourself that's just very hard to do, especially in this era where you have so many distractions and so many outside influences, you know, telling you that, nah, you ain't that. Mm. Yeah, dude, I, I, I agree with you. And I think that um, the closest moments I've had to tapping into that, as, and this might seem weird, but uh, were uh, being at Burning Man and uh, the time after being at Burning Man. And... Um, I think it's because, and regardless if it's you know induced by drugs or not, but for like a week, you actually get to see people being the best version of themselves, and it kind of fills you up, and you realize what you were missing and what you needed and how you operate once you have that thing that you needed. You know, you think you're seeing spirits? I don't know if it's spirits, man. I really just think it's like the better part of humanity. And then you start interacting with people, and instead of like trying to survive the interaction as most anxious people um try to do when they're interacting with people they're not they're not looking at that person going what does that person need out of this interaction they're often going what do i do to succeed in this interaction uh, am i being funny enough am i being smart enough am i being uh intelligent enough like how am i being perceived they're all internal thoughts 
But when yeah, it's, you're not, it's not about service. It's not about service. Once you're full, you start going, oh, this person's a little nervous. Well, let me make them feel more comfortable. Or, oh, this person wants me to listen. So let me just listen. Or they want me to laugh at their jokes. Okay, let me laugh at them. But see, I, I think that's what happens when you tap into the divine in you, right? Like yes. they always say you can submit your will to the God in you or your lower nature, which, which is commonly called the devil. But it's just like, when you look at somebody like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was a spirit. And he was able to tap into this spirit that literally filled up the whole fucking planet. And you would feel small next to that spirit, right? You would shrink next to that spirit unless you had the same kind of spirit. Because mm-hmm. you got to have that same kind of spirit to recognize that. Mm. But if you don't have that same kind of spirit, it'll shrink you. That's what makes it so easy to win against you. Because you don't think you can beat me. Yeah. But I know I can beat you. But yeah. you don't think you can beat me. You don't even think you're supposed to be here having this conversation with me. So when you sit there with Burning Man, I think that you're looking at people's spirits, bro. Maybe. I really do. I think that y'all, you're not even looking at the human, the human form of a person. You're looking at people's auras, their spirits, like the, literally the best part of folks that nobody can see. Yeah. Like, I think that's the hardest thing for any of us to tap into, man. Y'all heard some wild shit this week, bro. Go. That fucked me up. Salute to Debbie Brown. You know what I'm Sam, my sister Debbie Brown, like she was having this conversation with me and she was talking about this psychic. And uh, I went to go look at what this psychic said. And this psychic talked about how when Kobe Bryant uh, passed away, uh, his spirit, his, his spirit and his consciousness walked everybody into the afterlife. And then his spirit and his consciousness came back and observed, you know, the wreckage. And he was so distraught. And I was like, I don't know if I believe this. I don't know if I believe this shit or not, but I'm just like, what does happen to your conscience after you die? So, it's, so it took me down this whole rabbit hole of people who actually died, but they say the consciousness stays alive. So your consciousness is observing everything. Your consciousness realizes you died. That wouldn't freak you the fuck out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, to be honest with Yo. you, that's what these like billionaires are working on right now they're working on trying to find a way to to take your consciousness out of your body and like download it on some sort of like card so that you could insert it into another fake body or so you could exist on the computer forever i mean the guy who is now a woman that started sirius xm radio uh is downloading his wife's consciousness into a robot right now Really? It's a crazy story. It's the most fascinating tranny in the world, this guy. Like I, I would really? love to sit down him. But uh it's 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 really remarkable. And that's what people are trying to do. That's what they think the future is. They think the future is me and you get our complete consciousness decoded so it can be taken out of us. Because the only problem with our bodies or the only problem with living forever is your body starts to decay and wilt. They're like leaves, you know, they can't be around for too long. You know, your bones get yeah. brittle, your heart starts to fail, your lungs, whatever happens. What if you could just renew all that shit? Run it back. Yeah, your, will, your will and your spirit don't go anywhere. If anything, like you get sharper. I mean, like you you learn more as you get older and you experience more things. And like mm-hmm. you get more secure, you get more self-esteem, you get more confidence. You know what I'm saying? You start to, especially, you know, you start working on yourself, going to therapy, you know, talking to sacred purpose coaches, whatever it is, you just start to become a better version of yourself. When people hear that, when people hear, oh, he's a better version of himself, it has nothing to do with physical. Yeah. It has to do with all of this, baby, that yeah. mental and that, that fucking spiritual. What do they say? The A fish rots from the head down. I thought they said that about vagina. Hmm. Wait a minute. Let me think. A fish rots from the head down. What does that mean? <laughs> no, but that's what they say that like, uh, you know, they talk about organizations and shit like that, like the Cowboys. Like, if you just cut off the head, if you cut off Jerry, then maybe the Cowboys organization will be good. Same thing with the Knicks. But I also, th- but I also think same thing with like your body. It's like if your brain is filled with these awful thoughts and like you're constantly anxious and questioning yourself. Like, I don't think you're going to be in great physical shape either. I think the toll that that takes on your mental is going to take it uh, take it on his physical. I mean, look at Chris, man. Chris, who? Chris Moreau. Moreau. Chris, you not, you 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 got bad thoughts, Chris? I don't think so. <laughs> so 
<laughs> See, Michael Jordan never thought about anything. There was no <laughs> think with Michael. You yeah, just Michael did. a fucking question. Michael give you a yes or no answer. Okay, if you said Michael, you feeling you feel bad, Chris? Michael, fuck no, I feel great. You feel bad? Get on this court and get this fucking work. Mm. Okay. But yeah. But the, the thing with Michael, and it kind of gets back to what you're saying, is there's, look, I've watched the NBA religiously for forty years. There's no question he's the best player ever, and it's not even close. It's, it's ridiculous to even talk about it. Is he happier than LeBron? No. I doubt it. I, I mean, if, if you're the best player, everybody knows it, and at your Hall of Fame induction speech, um, you have to spend the majority of it settling old scores. That means you still don't feel validated, even though you're still the greatest of all time, according to everybody. So it's an interesting question, right? Like, is Jordan the greatest winner of all time? He's certainly a better winner than LeBron. It's not even up for debate. Is he a happier individual? I can't tell you that. My guess would be no. You you make a great point there, Chris, and I think it's something that we often get confused. Like, we see greatness, and we often think, like, greatness means that you won in life. But oftentimes, greatness is accompanied with misery, and it's that misery that drives you to greatness, right? So, like... It, who has enjoyed their life more? Probably LeBron, man. To be honest with you, and they LeBron don't LeBron don't even, he, LeBron is not the happiest NBA player of all time. No, but he's happier than Jordan. Why? Why do we say that though? Jordan's eyes are yellow. They red. They not supposed to be. Man, he's sixty years old and he does cognac and cigars every day religiously. Well, maybe that's another reason thing we should look into. <laughs> and he never used to drink or smoke. He don't got shit else to do right now. Like, nah, listen, I think man. Jordan, I, I don't have a problem with him. I don't I don't look at that as insecurity because you're at a fucking Hall of Fame speech telling the fucking truth. Listen, if but, I if I look at my old high school coach and I say I keep bringing this story up because I want him to always know he made a fucking mistake. I don't have a problem with that. If Jerry Krause fucking fucked up the dynasty. I don't have a problem with him calling Jerry Krause out. If Byron Russell, did you, yo, the Hall of Fame speech where he said, he, yo, he said that Byron Russell said to him, it was, he said it was a time they was playing baseball. No, Utah was in town when he was playing baseball. So Carl Malone, John Stockton, and Byron Russell came to see him with some shit like that. And Byron was like, yo, you better be lucky you retired because if you was on this motherfucking court with me right now, I would, I would guard you and this and that, yada, yada, yada. I would shut you down, blah, blah, blah. So Michael said, when it came time for the NBA Finals, said he went up to Byron and he said, yo, you remember about a year ago when you motherfucking told me that if I was back on this court, you could guard me and you could shut me down? You about to get your chance now, motherfucker. What? That's his, that's his muse. That's his energy. That's his motivation. Yeah. That don't mean he insecure because he's calling that shit out and reminding motherfuckers of, of, of yo, you're actually giving him props. Byron, you are my influence, you stupid motherfucker. That's why you should have kept your fucking mouth shut when you're on the court with greatness. You don't got to give me any reason to be good. I, you know I'm showing up. Right. That's the, You don't rattle the fucking cage. They rattled the cage. So now they got to hear that cage rattle for the rest of their life. I don't look at that as insecurity. That's I, the, got, I got plenty of motivation like that. That's the motivation... That's the motivation that he needs, and he goes out there and he actually searches for that motivation. That being said, if you felt complete, if he felt complete, if he felt he didn't need to prove anything to the world, then he wouldn't do that. No, I think sometimes you just got to, sometimes you got to toot your own horn. The sometimes you got to remind, he's not a rapper. He can't do it in songs. <laughs> like, like, we've never said Jay-Z's insecure. You know what I'm saying? Those guys tell, they tell you I'm the greatest, the best rapper alive. I do this better than you. Jordan only has interviews. He only has documentaries. He only has books to tell you. Shit, we didn't feel that way about Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali tell you he the motherfucking greatest all the time. Yeah. We didn't say he was insecure. Yeah, I think that people would say it. I think if you ask your therapist, I think a therapist would probably say, yeah, all these people have insecurities and they have extreme confidence or narcissism even. Like, 100%. If you need to scream at the top of your lungs that you're the greatest, right, you must not feel like people think you're the greatest I, and you I value what that. they think. I think you have to talk yourself into things, man. Like we, Well, we, that we, means we you don't believe it. The, no, that's not true. It's just reinforcement. Listen, Why do you need world, reinforcement? In a world where you're always getting vocal negative reinforcement, what are you hearing in your head? The only counter to the negative reinforcement is to tell yourself, no, I am great. 
No, I am the best. No, I, I know I'm putting in more work than anybody. This motherfucker can't guard me. No, I know I can get in this ring and knock this motherfucker out. Mm-hmm. No, I know I can get on stage and tell these best jokes. Like, if people are always telling you who sucks, who's telling you that you're good? Yo, when you're, when you're a child, people pat you on the back and give you encouragement to go be the best. But as you become an adult, it's like that goes away and all you got is the negative shit. Who is going to tell you that you're great? I think, yourself. I think you're describing the most relatable feeling about this. And I think that's why we resonate or these people resonate with us, right? And this type of behavior resonates. I love a chip on my shoulder. I love it when motherfucker yes. tells me I can't do some shit. I'm grateful. Yes. When I hear that shit, I am grateful. I love it yes. if I hear somebody pop off or say some slick shit on Twitter or something like that, especially if it's one of my colleagues, or one of my contemporaries. I love Ooh. They don't even know, but I'm digging Ooh. their grave for them. They don't know it. Ooh. I got the shovel. Do you know what I mean? There's a hole. Where I'm ready to put you in it. You don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Put dick in that hole. <laughs> Shit, I'll put Tyrese and Casanova's dick in the fucking hole. I, listen, I love that shit, man. That shit gets me off. And guess what? I'm not going to go back and forth with you on Twitter. I'm going to show Do the work. Through, through actions and deeds. Oh. You're going to constantly keep seeing this fucking work. And there's nothing you can do about it. And when we're all said and done... 15, 20 years from now, when you look back, you're like, man, that motherfucker did everything I thought he wasn't yes. going to do. Yes. And we all feel that way. That being said, if we were like some Zen Buddhist monks, me and you, and somebody said some dumb shit to us, we would probably be, we would probably be so like confident and fulfilled in what we need or not needing anything that we probably wouldn't even pay no mind. But here's the reality. At the end of the day, we are human and things do affect us. And how we deal with those things that affect us differs from person to person. And we tend to resonate to the motherfuckers that go, all right, you affected me. And now I'm taking you down because that's the cost of affecting me. Listen, that's, that, that's why I love this. I love this conversation, man, because that's exactly what it is. You got to be able to channel that, that negative that's coming towards you. You got to be able to channel that hate from those doubters, that any energy from those people who are telling you that you can't succeed. How do you channel that? Some mm. people internalize it and that shit weighs them the fuck down and they don't never fly. Mm. They never get to fly. They never get to soar because they're weighed down by all that shit. Some people take that shit and just turn that shit into positive fuel yeah. in order for them to go out there and be great. Because by the way, think about it like this. All of those people that's talking shit about you, that's because they don't feel like they can stop you any other fucking way. 100%. That's all they can do. Mm. They can't do shit else to you. They can't, they can't beat you on the court. They can't beat you in the rink. They can't beat you on stage. There's nothing else they can do except for talk. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Fuck that man. Listen, man. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. We all needed a good dose of Michael Jordan during this fucking I agree with like, you. We, man. we all we we all needed this shit. And I think we needed GOAT. I think we needed to put some respect on the word goat because we were throwing goats around a lot. Yes. yes. You know, like. Goats around like fucking Jamaicans. <laughs> <laughs> we were, man. We throw them shit around too fucking much, man. We throw, we throw goats around too goddamn much. We were throwing goats and it's like each industry can have that goat. Or you can have the goat of a of the time in which things are operating in. But we were throwing goats around like it was just like, yo, he's good. We're throwing goats around like goods. I think it's goats and I think it's gods. And Jordan is on God level. Jordan is on God level. And that right there, that is very, very, very rare air. You can talk about, you can argue about who's the greatest of all time. You can put LeBron in that conversation and, you know, um, Kobe, like those guys are considered the greatest of all time. Hall of Famers, legendary. But we know who the gods are, bro. Ain't too many gods out here. That's just the truth to the matter. Ain't too many gods of their industry. Gods of mm. in the game. Mm. Jordan is a god. Period. There's nothing like him. One, There's none before him. And I don't know if there's none to come. Because that shit don't have nothing to do with talent. It's been plenty of people who physically have better builds than Michael Jordan. Probably shoot better than Michael Jordan. But it's just something up here. That, that will to win, that cerebralness, that spirit that they just don't have. They're not able to tap into that realm Jordan was able to tap into, man. You know what it is? It's like there's very few people that work hard at shit that comes easy. You know, mm. like 
I think that's what separated Jordan. It's like most guys that have a great dribble, they don't develop a jump shot because they have such a good dribble, they could get to the basket whenever they want, and that's just how they'll develop their game. And most guys that shoot the ball really well don't really learn how to dribble because they're like, I'll just pull up and shoot in your face. Why do I need to dribble the fucking ball around? And Michael Jordan is one of these guys that he was great at both, and he still took the time to learn the game and execute the game and perfect the fucking game. You know, it's like... I don't know. It's 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 the reason why, you know how like kids don't value money because they don't work for it, and like people who make money easy usually spend it frivolously. Like there's a lot of strippers out here that are broke right now because they made their money easy, so they just spend it easy because there's no value. But when you grind I mean, for fucking ten, twelve years to be where you are, every dollar you make is not the work you put in right then. It's the ten, twelve years. That got you there. That f- that are like um, that will fulfill that money. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Like I don't I spend it. my I money mean, frivolously but- because I know how long and like hard I had to work to get it. It's not just doing a podcast. It's the ten years before a podcast. Yeah, and and not only that, did you enjoy the process though? Like, yeah. It's not, you got plenty of people out here that do shit just for money. Like I don't do this podcast for money. I do this right. podcast because I genuinely enjoy. Coming here and kicking the shit with my guy every week. Yeah, you know what I mean, I I genuinely love what the fuck it is that I do. Yeah. It just so happens that money happens to come with it, and that's usually what happens when you forget about the money and just enjoy the fucking process. Why is that so hard for most people? I because people, people are not really doing what they love to do. That's why. Yeah, they just do- <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing what you you're doing what you think is profitable. You're doing what you think can make you some money. You're doing what you think can make you famous. You're not doing what you love to do. Because if you actually are doing what you love to do, it never feels like fucking work. And you would just you just enjoy doing it so much that you become great at it. Next thing you know, people want to fucking pay you for it. Yeah. Yeah. It is weird. It's like you it's like hustling backwards or something. I, I it's hard to uh it's sometimes like the tricks of life are like going backwards or like doing the opposite thing. Remember Ready Player One? Remember that movie Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember how right like now the way that he got the first coin or whatever was instead of driving forward with everybody, he like drove back. Yeah. 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 And I feel like there's some things with life, like, like you're feeling shitty. And instead of focusing on like what you need to do for yourself to feel good, if you just help other people, all of a sudden you just start to feel better. Right. And it's like the same thing with work is like, instead of, instead of the same thing with money by literally not chasing money, you end up making money. (laughs) Isn't that, it Absolutely. makes no sense, right? It's, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's, it's stupid. But, I, mean, I, don't, I don't even, I, I really just think it's about finding something it is that you love to do. Because you got to think, man, and you know, this goes kind of to what everybody's experiencing right now, right? You know, when you're down, when you're yeah. depressed, you know, when you're not doing what it is that you really want to do, right. it's hard to be enthused by anything. And once you're yeah. not enthused by anything, your will to win is gone. You don't ever try to get yourself out of that situation. Like, yo, people talk about, you know, letting their dreams die. Yo, you let your dreams die because you started working this job to pay bills because you needed money. And in the process of paying those bills, you forgot the motherfucking continue to keep striving towards your dream. Yeah. So you you let that energy die. You let that will to do something greater than what it is you're doing die. And now you don't love what you do. And so now that shit reflects in everything you do. Because now you just walk around angry, depressed, mad at the world, mad that you got to be at this fucking job for eight hours a day. And you keep having these daydreams, right? You keep having these daydreams. These things keep flashing in your mind about, you know, what you should be doing or what it is you really want to do. You understand when they say that's your that's your dreams passing you by. That's literally what that is. Right. You are at a job right now. <laughs> right. Or, or, you're, or you're doing something that you really don't love. And that shit is bothering you every fucking day. And you keep having right. these, these daydreams about something that is you want to do. That's your dreams fucking passing you by, bro. <laughs> That's all that is. That's literally what that is. Yeah. And you're just going to keep letting them pass and be mad at your motherfucking job when you need to do what Michael Jordan would do and motherfucking start working towards your actual goal, working towards your actual fucking dream. And by the way, you can do both. I've been telling y'all this shit since black privilege. It's 168 hours in a week 
Work your fucking job that you hate to pay the bills, right? 30, 40 hours a week, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. It's been another 30, 40 chasing your fucking dreams. That's only 80 hours. Bro, you what know the what? Fuck. I think one reason why quarantine is so depressing for people is because they're finally realizing that they're not chasing things because they're lazy. Like Oof. you have every opportunity Oof. right now while you're stuck in the house to chase all those dreams that you said that you want to chase, but you didn't have enough time. But you haven't done jack shit, but watch Ozark and Friends reruns and Tiger King and tweeted the same bullshit you always tweet and meme the same bullshit you always meme. So when it motherfuckers never tells me that they've watched all the Netflix. In my mind, I'm like, yo, you live here. You must be doing great in life. <laughs> you must have accomplished everything you ever wanted to fucking accomplish. Bro. You got time to watch all, all the Netflix. Because yeah, that's my last goal. My last goal in life is watching all of Netflix. I got a lot of other shit I need to accomplish before I get to all of Netflix. All in all in Netflix? You know how much all in Netflix? You so, watched all of Netflix in I'm, three weeks? I'm watching all of Brazzers before I'm watching all of Netflix. What the fuck, mm -hmm. bro? Listen, man, uh, let's pay some bills. That was the deep dive. I hope y'all learned something. I love it. I absolutely love it. I got to pee, man. Can you pay those while I, I yeah, go I take this you. piss? I got you. Okay, uh, check out hymns and you could discover the tiny pill worthy of a big celebration. All right. Uh, Forhims.com is your one stop shop for hair loss, skin care and sexual wellness for men. One thing I've been realizing, salute to my dude Chico Bean. Chico Bean does the, uh, the hairline chronicles on Instagram. I actually flashed my hairline on there and I've seen a lot of brothers who are dealing with, you know, hair loss. They got receding hairlines. They got the George Jefferson shit going on. And a lot of them are like, fuck it. I'm going to do something about this after this quarantine. So thanks to science, you know what I mean? You can do that. That's what 4 is for. It's your one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. All right? Uh, okay, they offer well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions and answer all your questions in a confidential chat. Uh, once your medical history is overviewed, you're approved by a doctor. Products are shipped directly to your door, okay? Try hymns today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash idiots. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash idiots. Forhims.com slash idiots. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went in person to the doctor's office or pharmacy. Remember, that's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash idiots. Forhims dot com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the motherfucking show. Oh, well, before we get back to the show, this, today's Brilliant Idiots is also brought to you by Clean Coat. Okay, man, you really need this right now because you cannot get your hand or uh, keep your hand on enough cleaning products nowadays. But don't you think that most cleaning products make us feel more dirty? You know what I'm saying? Between the chemical formulas and plastic bottles, the traditional cleaning products are just a surprisingly messy business, all right? But Clean Coat makes natural cleaners that actually clean, okay? With ingredients you can actually understand, with packaging that's actually landfill-free. Those things are important because we're trying to fucking save the environment because if we don't save the environment, the earth is going to continue to rebel against us and get rid of its greatest parasite, which is us, the humans. But Back to Clean Coat. Instead of wondering what is in your cleaning product, <laughs> with Clean Coat, your kids and pets are safe with non-toxic coconut-based formulas. Mm, that smells good already. Don't you want your whole house smelling like coconut? Clean Coat is, is an effective <laughs> as leading brands of detergent. You can get the same level of clean with none of the chemicals. Okay, go to cleancoat.com to get a customized starter kit and adjustable paper-based refill delivery service that fits the needs of your home and lifestyle. You can finally break up with plastic because Clean Coat is the only company to put soap in milk cartons. You heard me right. Soap is in milk cartons. Okay, they got the sleek, shatter-resistant evergreen glass bottles that reduce plastic waste and look gorgeous on your countertop. All right, you can get started with Clean Coat right now. Go to cleancoat.com slash idiots for 25% off your first kit, but only until May 30th. All right, get 25% off your first kit. Now through May 30th at cleancoat.com slash idiots. That's cleancoat.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the motherfucking show. So should we do a little asking? You got any idiot? church announcements? Man, you know the church is closed, bro. Church is motherfucking closed. Man. Uh -huh. You know, I do want to shout out. Um, I want to salute my man, Lil Dicky. Yes. Lil Dicky has the best show on TV right now. I've heard the show's really good. My, my guy, Fucking Andrew Santino's on it too, man. 
Who, who's Andrew? Who does he play? Andrew plays his agent, I guess, and like best friend. Uh, he's a redhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. The redhead dude. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's great, I, I, man. Um, Very funny comic. He's got a podcast called Whiskey Ginger, man. Y'all should check that out. That shit is funny as fuck. I slept. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'm, I'm a TV guy, but I'm not one of these guys that sit around and just watches anything. But my homegirl, Jenny Henry, Jenny Rice Henry, Jenny hit me up and Jenny was like, you should check Dave out. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So like, like maybe a week before last, it was seven episodes available on demand. I think it's 10 for the season, but it was only seven up on demand. I think the new one actually comes out tonight on Wednesday. Cause it's, oh, no, it's eight now. So, yeah, number nine comes out tonight. Man, I watched that shit and I laughed a fucking lot. It's so smart. The way they, the way they attack men's insecurities, the way they attack men's fragile egos, the way they deal with men's mental health in that show. Fucking bravo, little goddamn dicky. I, I've never liked anything Little Dicky has done. Hmm. Not that I dislike Little Dicky. I think he's a good human being. I just never was into his music like that. You know what I'm saying? Even when he did the Freaky Friday video, I thought that that video was a, a, a good visual. But I just feel like he found a way to call niggas nigga through a nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But but <laughs> that goddamn TV show is just amazing. Because even when you think back about Little Dicky and you watch his old videos and stuff, it's like, he should have been doing TV. I, I've always looked at Little Dicky like a sketch comic, and he just chose to do his sketches as rap because yeah, he's gifted yeah. in in rhyming words, and he's gifted in analogies, and he's gifted in that. Like the guy can spit, he regardless. Can yeah, regardless if you like what he talks about or not, the guy can do the skill. And I think that he separated himself from most sketch comics by actually rapping out the sketches, and uh, but he was always really creative with it. So. My assumption when I was just kind of watching his stuff, I was like, I think this guy's making a move for Hollywood. Maybe he'll be an actor or something like that. But in my opinion, it's not going to work unless he's involved in the creative because his greatest asset is not the way he looks, right? His greatest asset is his brain. The show's got to yeah. be the thing that he makes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some, he fucking, he found like, a way to I, do I it, like man. like the fact that he's incorporated his, he's really, it's really his life. Like, yeah. I remember Lil Dicky telling me a story about his penis one time. Yeah. And trying to explain to me what he explained on the show. Like, he's got some type of rare disease deformity to where he's got, like, two dick holes and all types of other shit. So he pees out the side of his dick. Like, Wait, what? some wild shit. And I remember him telling me this and me saying to him, what the fuck are you talking to me about? Like, but he incorporated that into a whole episode. So wait, what does like, he have? What does his dick look like? He needs I an OnlyFans. I remember fans. the name of that shit. If you look it up, I'm sure you can find the name. It's like a... It's some shit he has. It's like some rare deformity. He's got he's actually got a whole episode about it because he never wants his girl to see his penis. Right. Of course. And yeah. that episode is so funny, man, because it's just like he's got this picture of Drake in his room. But every time he goes to fuck his girl, it's just like Drake looking at him like, yo, it's the what? <laughs> his show is fucking good, man. Dave on FX is fucking phenomenal. And you can I watch laugh. it on Hulu if you don't have cable. And I think yes, that's, that's where a lot of people it. get into it. And yeah. you know what else I started watching on Hulu? What's that? Fucking... uh. What what we do in the shadows? What's that? Man, that shit is a movie about these vampires who are who are getting filmed for a doc documentary. But it's a fucking comedy. These vampires in Staten Island, fucking hysterical, man. Really good, man, man. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like fucking hysterical. See, I like that kind of humor. I like the humor they do on Dave. Yeah. I like the humor they do on what we do in the shadows. I like that kind of risky, wild, just nut nut ass shit. I like that shit. That yeah, shit that yeah. they would call white boy humor. I like that type of shit. That shit it. is fucking funny, man. So those are my two recommendations for you. What we do in the shadows and fucking Dave on FX. You can watch them both on um on Hulu if you got Hulu because FX is on Hulu. We got to check it out, man. Let's do some asking idiots. Let's do it. Where they at, Taylor? You sent them to me? Well, you know what? While we're getting those asking idiots, why don't we pay a little bill ski right here, guys? Oh, no. I just paid. I just did two. We have one more. You want to do it right now? Or yeah. you want to do asking idiot first? Uh, why don't we do Oh, it you now? know what we didn't do? We didn't do things you won't give a fuck about next week. Well, all right. So why don't we knock this bill out? Then we do things you won't give a fuck about. And then we do, uh, then Let's we do, do ask an idiot. Or, I mean, it's up to you. We can, yo, we can go either way, son. 
I'm down for either one. Don't matter. Do you do, let's let's do let's do, let's do some things you don't care about next week first. Then okay. do the. Um, All right, bet. Things you uh, don't you care about talk next about week. The Mets. The Mets. Uh, actually, J Rod, J Lo, and A Rod. Buying the Mets, do you give a fuck? No, not at all. Like, it means nothing to me. Why? Because you don't give a fuck about the Mets? I just don't care about baseball. You know, actually, you know what? One thing I do think is cool is like, um, this is like some old timey shit where like wealthy families unite and by uniting, their relationship is actually like a business partnership and they're Ooh. using that wealth to, I mean, I guess continue to grow their wealth, but this is this is how marriage used to be. Like marriage being about love is like a very new concept. Back in the day, it was like, "Yo, you got this shit. You got a milk farm. All right, bet we got you know chickens over here. Why don't we have milk and chickens? Then then we got dairy and everything's fine. And that's how you grew. But it looks to me like we're witnessing like the Latino version of this. It's, it's kind of cool. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I guess I, I don't know. I love seeing Latinos being owners of baseball teams. Only because Latinos dominate baseball. Right. It just makes fucking sense. Like, yes, go own a fucking team. All right? I, I think I think it's great. Uh, the only thing that could make it better if it was the Yankees, then they'd be in the Bronx in the midst of all the goddamn Latinos. I mean, that would be the illest shit. Like, if J-Lo bought the fucking Yankees. In the Bronx, Empanada Night would be fire. fire. <laughs> Empanada Night? Come on, man. That shit would be popping. What do you do you give a fuck about uh we should give a fuck about this? What this is shit you don't care won't care about next week? I think we will care about this. Man de Blasio says, um, he, he tweeted out, I can't tell you when we'll be able to host cultural events and parades again, but I can tell you who our first parade will be for. When the time is right, New York City will honor our healthcare workers and first responders with a ticket tape parade up the Canyon of Heroes. I think this is genius. I think they deserve it, but I also think it's fucking stupid. Because why does Bill de Blasio want to have a large crowd so bad? This guy. And why are you going to have a crowd of the people who 100% got corona? Like, why are you going to walk corona through the city again, you fucking idiot? Son, this guy is the worst. De Blasio could be the worst mayor ever. Like, he's absolutely he he's bona fide retard. He just things at the wrong time. Like, that sentiment is good. What he said is good. He should have just said, we're going to find a way to honor That's better. healthcare workers. That's better. Don't say the goddamn parade, because now you're thinking about everybody gathering in large crowds. You know who he is? He's, he's Wreck-It Ralph. All he does, do, 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 do. <laughs> that's all he knows. That. Remember when there was the Rikers Island shit? <sighs> Some shit bad happened in Rikers Island, and they were like, the Blasio, what are we going to do about it? And he's like, I got an idea. We're going to close Rikers Island. It's like, that's not how you fix jails by closing them all. <laughs> no, you fix the way the jails are run. That's how you fix the jail. Oh, my God. Do you know what I'm saying? No, nah, you're right. 100%. He's Don't just the, the worst. Down, all you going to do, you got you to gotta change the system of jail. There it is. It's like, yeah, de Blasio, how are we going to stop school shootings? Uh, st stop school? school? No. Is that what we should do? Exactly. Hey. Should we stay? Hey, my wife is black. Did I tell you that? <laughs> hey, I'm woke, aren't I? Remember when he made his kid pick out his afro for the election to make sure that everybody knew he was black? <laughs> Remember that shit? <laughs> hey, Yo, pick out your afro, please. <laughs> well, he's out next year. Next year is his last year as uh, New York City mayor. Hopefully, Andrew Yang runs. I mean, is Andrew uh, Yang even from New York? Do you have to be? I you think he should. Is, I think he was born here. He was born here. He better be born and raised. We need born and raised. I don't need some fucking pretty boy from California telling me what New Yorkers need. Okay. You know why I like Andrew Yang? No, because I think Andrew Yang will make fucking um New York look like the futuristic haven that it's supposed to, man. New York should look like Dubai, bro. Fuck that. Nah, man. New York no, is you gritty. Gotta, yeah, fuck. New York needs to look like Dubai, show. It's like New York supposed to be futuristic. Like Times Square is, is a dub, bro. Times Square ain't it no more, bro. Hey, bro. Who goes to Times Square? Not me. Everybody. <laughs> I don't. I don't go to Times Square. Because you a native New Yorker. That's who we got to care about. We got to care about native New Yorkers. Well, think about that. You're not even impressed anymore. Think about how much we're going to have to pay in taxes when this motherfucker trying to give everybody $1,000. We already got to pay a bunch of in taxes now. You're in Jersey. You don't got to pay the taxes. I pay New York state tax and Jersey tax. I live in Jersey, work in New York. Well, that's dumb. I gotta pay both. <laughs> that, that's just dumb, bro. Pay, that's the way it works. You gotta pay your state tax in Jersey. You gotta pay your state tax in fucking New York. That's the way it works. Fair enough. And guess but, what? what? You spend all this money in taxes, and New York still looks shitty as fuck. 
Listen, I'm okay with Yang. I got to see what he's trying to do for the city. I got to see what's going on. That being said, I like I like something homegrown for the city. You know our problems. You know what we have to deal with. How can you possibly know our problems if you're coming from a place that isn't here? You don't know what we really got to deal with. You don't know what's yeah. really going on. I think he's born here. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I need you to live here, bro. I need you to live here, and I need you to know exactly what's going on and know exactly what we're upset about so we can fix it. What you're trying to do is be the mayor of a big city so that eventually you could be, you know, run for president again, but now you got some clout. I understand what you're doing. You're clout chasing. Just like when Hillary was the senator of New York so that she could run for president, you're just using yeah. New York. And I'm not about to be used by somebody. If you're going to be the mayor of New York, you're going to have to try to do a good job. You're going to have to help our, our lives, man. I get it. He's um, from she, Cincinnati, New York. Say again? Say what? He's from Cincinnati. Cincinnati, New York. Nah, he's from That's Cincinnati. Cincinnati. He's not from New York. Nah, B. Cincinnati. That's what it says right here, though, on Google. Cincinnati, New York? I might be saying this wrong. Cincinnati. You might be no. saying this wrong? No, Schenectady. Schenectady. <laughs> Whatever. What the fuck? Yo, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Yo, 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 yo. Taylor. Hey, son. Taylor, when did you immigrate to America, Taylor? When my did bad, you immigrate bad. here? Yo? From, from fans only and Schenectady? That shit does not say Cincinnati. Yo. It might as well say Cincinnati. No, no, it might as well How not. How do you spell it, Taylor? How do you spell it? How do you spell it? S-C-H-E-N. Cincinnati starts with a C, Tyrese. I know. Tyrese. I know fuck? it does. But this, but SCH could be sh- no. <laughs> Taylor, I need you to grab no. a, I need you to grab a towel from the bathroom and stuff it in your mouth. I need you That's to right. do that for Put the a rest towel of the in episode. your mouth, Taylor. <laughs> a whole towel, right? <laughs> Just fucking take down. a towel. Take the towel yeah. off the towel rack and stuff it in. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. What is this, what is, what is that? Your it's pronounced how how they pronounce Christian Schenectady? Schenectady. Schenectady. Whatever. That's Cincinnati. Same thing. It's not the same thing. It is. You would end up somewhere totally different if you put that in your way, your map quest. (laughs) Talking about the Midwest and upstate New York. Yeah, how are they the same thing? Okay. Not all cities look the same. (laughs) Listen, uh, did you hear about uh, this is shit you won't care about next week? Did you hear about the study that was conducted by researchers in Mumbai, India, that found coronavirus could linger in a man's testicles, making men prone to longer and more severe cases of the illness. Um, you got cor- corona in your balls, barona in your balls. Sh- Charlemagne, I think it's very insensitive of you to say that just men have testicles, okay? There are women out there that have testicles too, okay? You can identify however you'd like. Okay, you can identify as whatever you want. All right, listen, listen there are a lot. You want to go in so bad. You want to go in so bad. It's a lot you know of. Know what, Schultz? you're absolutely right. There are women out there who have testicles. And, you know, we have to include them as well. I think New York Post is being very insensitive <laughs> by not saying coronavirus could linger in a man and woman's testicles. And women's balls, it. man. Yeah, there are women's so balls the out there filled with fucking corona and nobody's talking about. Yeah. These it's fucking, fucking problematic. Bro. It's very it's, problematic. These yeah, bitches the, out here scratching their balls all day filled with corona, you know, right. sitting on the couch with their legs spread. Just like include, women do. <laughs> include women, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is not right. That's right. I, I, don't, we can't have people invisible in our society. <laughs> very good. Very good point, Andrew. Listen, that's... Very, very, very good point. You know? And I won't forget about this next week. I won't forget about this ever. I will fight this fight for as long as it needs to be fought. That's right. They said testicles are walled off from the immune system. Say what? I didn't know that. Say what? It said testicles are walled off from the immune system, so the virus can harbor there for longer periods than the rest of the body. That's what the study said. I didn't know testicles were walled off from the immune system. So testicles, I had no idea. Testicles are the Mexicans of our body. Talk to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Holy shit. What the fuck? And that's why they're down there like, oh, I like Corona. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take another Corona. Just hang it out over here, please. Oh my God. Uh, um, shit you won't care about next week. The desperation of the Democrats continues. Uh, Joe Biden says he'd pick Michelle Obama for VP in a heartbeat. Okay, so okay, who? That's like saying I would pick fucking Anthony Davis to play on my team. I'd pick LeBron James to play on my team. I'd pick fucking the Greek freak to play on my team. Of course you would pick Michelle Obama in a heartbeat. But guess what, Joe? It's not fucking happening. That's all you got to sell your fucking constituents is pipe dreams. How about come with some fucking real policies for black people? How about come with a real agenda for fucking black people? How about big up some of the great potential candidates, black women that are out there now that you could pick as your running mate. Don't dangle the fantasy of Michelle Obama as a VP. You know what I'm saying? The fucking uh, put, put, put enthusiasm and inspiration into your campaign because nobody has any. Nobody has any enthusiasm or inspiration for your fucking campaign now. That's, like, that's, I hate shit like that. Like, what if, We don't have time to fucking play, Joe. We don't have time for your imaginary fucking games. All right. Yes, I understand an interviewer asked you that question. You shouldn't even even fucking entertain it. You should have pivoted to the candidates that are out there now that are women, that are women of color that you think would be good enough for the job. And you should have put the light on them mm. instead of always trying to use your fucking homeboys and homegirls to bring shine upon yourself. Mm. It stands. And I will say it a million times. Joe Biden ain't shit without his homeboys and he ain't shit without his homegirls. Stop mm. it. Enough already. Knock it off, Joseph. So you think he was just pandering? It was, it was it's like a, it's like an ornament. It's like an ornament you dang, dangle in front of people just to just to get yourself hot. Like, yo, Joe Biden's campaign, it sucks. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody's talking about Joe Biden. You turn on CNN, MSNBC, you see Cuomo, you see Trump. You would think those two are running for president. Cuomo was at the fucking White House this week mm. meeting with Trump. You know what I'm saying? Cuomo's the one offering counter-programming every fucking day. Joe Biden is not showing any levels of leadership. Joe Biden is literally trying to play the quiet game into the White House. Mm. He, he really thinks he's in the quiet place. He really thinks if he just be, if he just, if I just be quiet and get, and get to November, they're going to vote me in. No, that's not how this shit works. Not at a time like this. Open your fucking mouth. You got to be active. So he's just using that little... Yeah, I'd love to have Michelle Obama for VP because you know what that does? It perks, it perks people's interest. It makes people say, oh, Michelle is VP. That's a possibility. Then people start paying attention to that whack ass campaign Joe Biden is running, man. That shit is garbage. Eventually, it's really garbage. Event, you're 100% right, man. And eventually people are going to start uh, you know, realizing, or at least uh, they're going to have to start realizing that the Democrats don't care about winning this election. What, they're, what they care about is not wasting any talent. So the Democrats are not going to put a potential hopeful for the future out there in front of the American people to lose, right? Because they're like, fuck, that could screw it up in the future. What they'll do is they'll pick a running mate that they don't care about their political future at all, and they'll put them with Biden. They clearly don't care about Biden. They think Biden's going to get washed. But the last thing that they're going to do is put someone that they really believe in out there right now to get eaten up by Trump. The Democrats do not care about you, at least for the president, the presidential election. I mean, the local Democrats, I think the people who are running in their like cities and that kind of stuff, they really do want to make change and, you know, do these things. But the Democrats have said, oh, this is done. We're running with Biden. We don't care if he gets fucked up. He's just a placeholder. We need another person to run for an election, but we don't care. I think the Democrats um, suffer from what we were talking about earlier. They suffer from what all Michael Jordan's opponents were suffering from. They just don't think they can win. Yeah. Simple as that. They don't believe they can win. If they believe they could win, they would be moving a totally different way. Mm -hmm. And they're still they're still playing politics in a time where we don't need no motherfucking politics. We need Bullworth, nigga. Yeah. We need Bullworth. We need Bullworth to come up, come out and tell us what the fuck is really going on. Yeah. If I was Joe Biden, I would create, I would lean into blackness through policy and pop culture, meaning that I would come up with an economic black agenda. I would come up with a criminal justice reform plan, the, the right to wrongs of the 94 crime bill. I would announce my running mate who would be a sister, you know, probably Senator Kamala Harris. I would announce my cabinet. I would show my shadow government. I would show the diversity in that 
And I would just lean into that. You know what I mean? Lean into that like a motherfucker because that's the only thing that's going to get you a buzz. You got you to gotta lean into the people that leaned into you, especially right now at a time like this. You mean to tell me that you have coronavirus impacting the black community the way that it is, right? And we all know that the reason it's impacting the black community is because of all these underlying conditions that existed way prior to coronavirus, these underlying conditions that were created by systemic racism, right? You got Dr. Fauci coming out saying that. You got Dr. Phil coming out saying that. You're the vice president for the first black president. You're the democratic nominee, right? Black people saved your political life during the primaries. That should be your shit to stand on. That should be your soapbox, Joe Biden. Joe Biden should be standing on that and saying, I am going to save the lives of the people who saved my political fucking life. Mm. That is a layup, bro. That's a layup. He's not leaning into that at all. So yeah. come November, God bless him. Because he knows he vote. doesn't have to. He knows that most black people will vote for him regardless. So he doesn't Isn't have that to. that fucked up? I mean, but that's on y'all. Y'all got to eventually remove yourselves from party if you want both parties to fight for your attention. It's as simple as that. That, it's like, that I agree with. I, I, I agree that, I agree that you know, uh, there should be a cognac party. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like there was a tea party. Yo. Just a group of brothers and sisters who have one common goal in mind, and that's the best interest of black people. And whatever candidate, uh, whatever candidate, Republican, Democrat, Green Party, yeah. that is going to, you know, do our bidding. Yeah. That's who we going to fuck with. You know? You know but, who he should choose as his running mate? Who? Cuomo. See, for me, yeah. that's a that's a power move. Now, I don't know if Cuomo will, will go for it, but the power move is you choose Cuomo and all of us go, all right, if Biden can't make it through this election, then Cuomo ends up being the guy. Matter of fact, you choose Cuomo as a VP. And then halfway through the campaign, Biden goes, I don't actually feel up to this, but I think Cuomo should continue to go through. And now all the Biden support is grandfathered into Cuomo, and then Cuomo ends up running against Trump. You, you I think you, that's you, you, the well, smartest way that the de that's how the Dems have a chance this election. I don't think they have a chance, but that is the closest thing to a chance. I don't have a problem with that, but you know what's so wild about that? The fact that we even have to have that conversation. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, w w w think about it. Like, this is the presidential election. It's fucking April. Yeah. The election is in November. Yeah. And we're talking about we should have somebody else because the candidate that's running is that fucking weak. And how do we sneak that person uh, into the <laughs> into the election? Yeah. They're playing the is this is they're playing the quiet game. You ever play the quiet game with your kids? You nah. don't have kids. But they're playing the quiet game. This is the movie The Quiet Place, where if you be quiet, you can survive. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do with Joe Biden. Yeah. Keep him quiet and he'll survive till November. Prevent defense. That shit ain't bro. working, bro. Prevent that shit ain't defense. gonna work. That shit is not working. This shit is sad. Not to mention all the other things that you gotta deal with. Russian interference that the Democrats never dealt with. Voter suppression that the Democrats never dealt with. Right. And now you just got good old fashioned voter depression where people just don't feel enthused, don't feel inspired by Joe Biden. And you about to have a second, a second six pack of corona come through in the fall? Yeah. You, you about to bring another keg of Corona yeah. around wintertime? Around November? Man, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> this shit is going to be crazy. This shit, this shit is really about to be stupid come November. Yo. Yeah, man. And by the way, if the Democrats lose, and I'm only saying if because I'm remaining optimistic because I am going to vote. Because I want to say when the Democrats lose. But I'm just going to say if to keep the optimism. If the Democrats lose, that's exactly what the fuck they deserve. You know why they deserve that? Because it's time for the Democrats to relook at, to, to, to relaunch their whole party and everything that they stand for. Right. Those old Democratic establishment ways are dead. It's time for Democrats to actually start doing for the people that always come out and support them, which mm. is black people, which is brown people. Yo, I love what AOC is doing. AOC is out here like, I'm not endorsing no fucking body. Yes, I am. She's doing. She's saying the responsible thing. Yes, I'm going to vote in November, but I'm not endorsing. I can't go out and endorse. I this thought guy she endorsed. Unless, I thought she endorsed Biden. The, huh? I thought she endorsed Biden. No, she said that we should all support whoever the Democratic nominee is. She said verbatim, "I can't endorse Joe Biden yet in good faith because I need to know what Joe Biden is going to do for me and mine." 
Simple as that. I fucking respect it, man. That's the way this shit should be. And guess what? After this election, Democrats are going to realize that's the way it's going to be. That's mm. Watch. They're going to they're learn the hard way. I hate to say it, but they're going to learn the fucking hard way. Mm. And guess what? Okay, sarah, sarah. Whatever will be, will we'll motherfucking be. be. And Michelle Obama will not be VP. Hmm. Want to pay some bills? Yeah, let's pay some bills, man. Guys, um, while you're concerned about who's going to win this election in November, uh, there's one thing you should never be anxious about, and that is giving your girl the best dick she's ever had in her entire life life okay good sex is very easy to have when the dick is hard and it's hard for a long time and ladies if you're listening right now you deserve it you deserve it during quarantine you've been locked in you've been doing everything you possibly can to keep that household safe and sound and you deserve the reward that is a hard penis bluechew.com gonna deliver it to you simple as that go to bluechew.com use our code idiots okay and you're gonna get the hardest dick in your life delivered right to your door five dollars is all you will pay for shipping that's it it's gonna be free you try it with our promo code that's idiots it's the same active ingredients that it's in um viagra cialis all that kind of stuff only the good thing it works twice as fast so you're not hanging around there for an hour whatever those pills take for your dick to get hard 20 minutes chew that thing up and you are good to go. So she gives you that look. She gives you a little tease. You chew that thing up and then you chew her out. You give her the night of her life. That is B L U E C H E W chew.com. Use the promo code idiots. You deserve it. Now let's answer some questions. That's right. Ask an idiot. Uh, this is a good one from yes.bianca. She says, What is something you'll never understand about women? Take it away, misogynistic shows. Um, what is something I'll never understand about women? Yes, sir. The question is something I'll never understand about women. Yes. God, there's a lot of things I won't understand <laughs> about women. <laughs> I don't know how to just pick one thing that I won't understand about. Oh, yeah. Why is it that you ladies um, make such a big fucking deal about what show or movie we watch and then fall asleep within five minutes of watching that show or movie? Why does it matter to you that much if you know you're going to fucking fall asleep watching it anyway. Why don't you just let me choose the movie because I'm going to be the one that watches the full length of the movie. You just want to be cuddled. So why don't you just say, I don't care. I just want to be cuddled. I cuddle you. And then we watch The Big Lebowski instead of watching The Bachelorette. That's the yeah. something that I don't understand. You, Sharla. Um, I don't understand why women think men are fucking psychic. We're not mind readers. Uh huh. Like, you have to tell us. You can't call men dogs, right? Yeah. But then understand that you got to train dogs to do what the fuck you want them to do. Yeah. But then don't have that same kind of patience with us. You got to tell us not to fuck your friends. No, I don't know anything what? about that. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. But <laughs> you have to fucking tell us what it is you want. Once you tell me once, I get it. And by the way, you might have to tell me twice. I've been with my woman. 23 years, almost Michael Jordan numbers. But it's shit that she's been telling me for 23 years. One day I'm going to get it. Let me tell you something. You don't ever get it. I don't think so. My dad. I don't think men are meant to get it. We're not meant to get it, man. My dad has been not doing the same shit that my mom has been asking <laughs> her, her, him to do for his entire life. And I've witnessed it. Literally, I've witnessed it. My mom has been asking him to do the same shit. He just refuses to learn how to do it. And that's just part of being a man. That's part of being a man. Like, I love, like, there's certain shit that you want me to learn. And I'm like, why? Like what? Be, fucking washing dishes. I'm not going to learn how why to do that. that Excuse me, Taylor. Why is that a problem? Taylor, it's okay. Why is what a problem? Washing dishes. Why can't you get that? There's nothing wrong with washing dishes. I just don't know how to do it. So when I go to do it and I do a fucked up job, don't complain. That's it. You know I don't know how to wash no it's goddamn dishes. Cleaning a dish. That's it. It's not that easy. It's not that women easy, have have a, Taylor. Women have, special, Taylor. women have a special touch for shit like that that some men just don't have. And that's another thing that a lot of women don't realize is that you're smaller, so you're closer to the sink, so it's less painful for you to wash the dishes. Okay? Nice. We're not built to wash the dishes. We'll put them away, but we're not going to be washing them shits. I just think it's some shit women are better at 
And there's some shit men are better at. Right. And that's fine. Like that's that's the whole point of like when I have these conversations about the sacred masculine and the divine feminine, it's about you know these 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 traits and attributes that exist within both of us, and we need them all to be the best version of ourselves. Right. If you lean too much towards one, that's when it becomes toxic. It can be toxic masculinity, toxic femininity. Femininity. I have a question. So she, so your wife, You're toxic Taylor. Your wife cooks and she has to clean the dishes too. Wow. That's not a wow because that's that a, is I, a wow. I, why can't you? I, why can't okay. you help her out with the dishes? Okay. Well, because what you just did is discredit. What I do, <laughs> what I do is provide the food. I provide okay. the food. As a cook, why can't you like help her clean? The I provide the food. That's the te- That's teamwork right there. I, Yo, pro- I go get the food. I provide the food. You, you know how it. crazy that shit would be, Taylor. Back in the day when we're hunting and gathering, and we go out on a on a week long hunt, and then we come back with a buffalo, and then the woman right. looks at us like, that's "Aren't you gonna have me right cook now. this buffalo?" No, I got the fucking buffalo. You were sitting on your ass, fucking braiding each other's hair, whatever the fuck you guys do that whole time. I'd like you to cook up some goddamn buffalo. That's even. He's out there hunting buffalo. That's and by not way, happening right now, though. And hold time out. You know what's even more important, Taylor? What? I don't fucking know how to cook. Okay, so if you not know how to cook, then clean the dish. No, 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 no. I don't know how to cook. Nah. I don't know how to clean dishes. I'll put the dishes in the dishwasher. No, I that, do that. Come on, that's crazy, Charlotte. You're acting crazy right now, bro. <laughs> this is in the dishwasher? You're asking crazy. Come on, bro. What's the next thing you're going to tell me? You don't have a gender? And then again, why? <laughs> Come on, bro. Not, no, this is What's happening issue right now, bro? Up. Because why can't y'all learn how to cook, though, either? Like, why does it have to just be up you, to you? You sound crazy. Like, Yo, this, no, I don't. Taylor, you know, let me ask you. Because, you if we were supposed to. We just got on a plane and you like. Why don't you learn how to fly? You want me to learn how to fly That's right now? We don't thing. have time for that. Taylor, Taylor, do you understand that food is scarce in America right now? Thank People you. are getting $1,200 stimulus checks. The fucking grocery stores are bare. And you want to waste food with me experimenting? You spoiled ass Philadelphian no, American. No, it's not. You are spoiled Y'all, as fuck. You know how many people just learn how to cook from just watching shows? Yo, like, I, don't not have Taylor, I don't have time for that. Taylor, food is Taylor, if God wanted us to provide food... Milk would come out of our nipples, okay? But it does not. It comes out of your nipples, so you're supposed to be the one that cooks up the food. Your body is food. That's Stop not, acting like you don't understand how the world was intended to be. That, that's not every fucked up. Is, no, no, no. Do y'all think every woman knows how to cook? I think no, the ones that got boyfriends do. Cook. I think that whoever knows how to cook should cook. My father-in-law knows how to cook his ass off. He cooks okay. the most. Okay. Between him and my mother-in-law. My daddy knows how to fry the fuck out of some fish. He loves seafood. He cooks. They okay. know how to cook. If you know how to do something, do it. My wife knows how to fucking put up shelves and all of that type of shit. You think that shit makes me feel like less of a man? Because I don't know how to assemble shit? No, nah, that, no. that should make you feel less of a man, B. I'm not going to nope. lie. You got to assemble nope. shit. You got to take out the trash and you got to fight. That's another thing women don't gotta do. They don't gotta fight. You don't know how to. You don't know how to fight, Taylor. You act like you know how to fight, but if shit really went down, you need a man to protect you. Okay, you know how I can protect you well if you feed me. I don't know what I don't know what this identifies as, and you shouldn't call him what. Say what? I said she said who fight what? I'm like I don't know what I don't know what they identify as, and you shouldn't call him what. Yo, I'm telling you, Taylor, a man needs to be full in order to protect you to the best of his ability. You don't want your boyfriend to be all weak out there, hungry while he's trying to keep you safe. And by the way, women, I know, I know women, people that put, now I'm not even going to say women, people who know how to cook, <clears throat> love to cook. They love it. They enjoy that's it. That's not they, true. <clears throat> they what? That's not true. What do you mean that's not Who true? hates doing something they're good at? Stop it. It's like all these girls that suck at giving head, they suck at giving head because... No, no. All the girls that don't like giving head don't like it because they suck at it. Nobody hates something they're good at. Okay, let's do another asking idiot. Uh, this is a good one. At DJ Master Jen wants to know how gay are me and Andrew for Michael Jordan? Oh, uh, dude, the most gay. I'll bottom. I'm yeah. Kind of hard not to be gay for MJ, bro. I mean, Sorry, hey, come on, bro. You know what they say? You you, you know what I will? Uh, I I heard Ti say this. Ti said. It's hard to be what you pretend to be when what you are is really in the room. 
It's hard to be with Michael you is to like uh, Michael is like super alpha male. Yeah. You no know, fucking like I you know, yeah. It's, I think it's cool. I think everybody got a little gay for MJ. It's hard to be what you pretend to be when what you pretend to be is in the room. That's it. Mm. The, the thing you exposes your phoniness. That's yeah, the yeah, he's yeah, the real yeah, alpha. Yeah, 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 so yeah. all of a sudden we become beta around that. But yeah, bro, I got no problem saying that I am enamored with Michael Jordan, dude. Absolutely and, and when, head over and, heels enamored. Yeah, and when they say gay, they don't mean gay in the sexual way of I do. You know, we would <laughs> I do. I'm not saying we would have sexual relations with Michael Jordan. It's just that we live in this era where if you show love and admiration and you say you're enamored with a, a man, they'll say you're gay. You know what I mean? Like, I would do we, borderline gay shit with Michael Jordan. Like if Michael Jordan wanted to like caress my cheek like that, like if he came up to me, he just looked me in my eyes and he was like, he's like, hey there, young fella. And he went like that. I would be 100% okay. I'd be 100% nah, Michael, okay with that. No, he ain't that good. No. Would you? <laughs> You wouldn't let him do that? <laughs> All right, Taylor. Said, what? <laughs> Taylor's what? trying to do her sound effects. <laughs> um, if Michael came up to me and did that to me, I'd be like, what the fuck? What? Did I have something on my face? No, nah, you wouldn't, bro. Stop it. Stop it, bro. You'd let him touch your face, dog. You wouldn't let Mike Not touch like your Michael face, touch dog? My face? I need to know the context of why Michael Jordan touched my face. Why not? Maybe he, Maybe your face looked good. What if he what if he did this? What if he came up to you? He was like, Oh, you growing a little beard on that right there? And then one finger just touched your bottom lip a little bit. <laughs> Don't fucking touch me, Mike. Son, nah, I'm son. Too. Nah, son. And then what if I'm he too. just and then what if he just went like this? What if he just went? He went, hey, 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 hey. Oh yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely threatening to sue Mike for then. That's sexual harassment. You sure, bro? That's yeah, he fondled me without my consent. You sure, bro? Michael Jordan put it. Michael Jordan put his fucking. Michael Jordan put his fucking finger in my mouth. Not in Michael your mouth. Michael Jordan asked me to do the Jordan tongue wave with him, <laughs> and we did the Jordan tongue wave together. And then he put his fucking finger on my tongue. <laughs> yeah, I want Now, by the way, if any man ever does that, <laughs> that is a level of gay we've never seen before. What? If you're a, you a grown ass heterosexual man and you go up to Jordan and go, Michael, let's do the tongue. Let's do the Jordan tongue wave. <laughs> Can you imagine how Michael Jordan would look at you? See? Get the fuck out of here. See? You're already thinking about it, bro. You're already having these thoughts. That's the effect of MJ on you. That is a dope Instagram picture. That's the picture we've never seen. That? Michael Jordan doing the Jordan tongue wave with somebody. What's the Jordan tongue wave? You know, he sticks his tongue out when he play, when he goes up for a shot, when he shoots, when he... Everything. Wait, show us. Show us. <laughs> you son, never seen that? Son, you got a Come tongue on, like an orca. Does your shit even leave your mouth, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I almost threw a little fish on it right there. This motherfucker about to do some oh tricks. <laughs> Listen, just call me Duchess. This could be the last one we get the fuck out of here. Just call me Duchess. Said, what advice would you give to those who cannot receive care for their mental health right now? Um, the first thing I would tell you is I don't know why you can't receive care because if you have a psychiatrist that you go see all the time, a therapist that you see all the time, they should be doing some type of telehealth right now. You know, you should be able to reach them via Zoom, via Skype, right. uh, via FaceTime, you know, right. on the phone. And if you can't, if they're not doing that, or you don't feel comfortable doing that, now is a good time to just practice a lot of good self-care. Yeah. You know, um, you know, turn the TV off and don't binge watch so much. Go fucking read a book, you know? Yeah. Um, exercise, get in shape, figure out some nice home workouts to do. Um, you know, learn how to meditate, you know, learn how to do breathing exercises. Like we're, we're in a time right now where the one thing that a lot of us crave is stillness. And a lot of us don't get that stillness when we're on the, when we're on the go all the time. So if you are one of these people who are quarantined and you're spending more and more time at home, to me, I would think that you have less distractions because of the quarantine. So, you know, learn, use that time to learn how to meditate, learn how to do some fucking breathing exercises. You can go online and, and learn those type of things. So smart. You know, that's the advice I would give you. And if you can't find a therapist, man, find, just find somebody to talk to. Find somebody to chop it up with. Find somebody to build with. Find somebody that you trust, you know, and, and you're not afraid to have conversations with. I'm getting a lot of that right now. I got so many homeboys, so many brothers I know hitting me up saying that they ready to talk to a therapist because they just been sitting at home reflecting. I've been yeah. connecting people with different people, you know, 
people are really just calling each other and telling each other how they feel in this present moment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just men straight up like, yo, I got anxiety. I'm scared. I got insecurity. So just find somebody to talk to. That's what I would, that's what I would, I would, I would tell you. Just call me. Just, just, I think you hit the nail on the head right there, man. That sounds like a great, yeah, that sounds like great advice. I mean, maybe, maybe also like reject impulsive desires. I feel like whenever I'm feeling low, I gravitate to like the candy, emotional candy. So like I'm looking at my Instagram to see if there's, you know, comments or likes or something like that. I'm looking at Twitter. I'm looking at these things that are like, they aren't really nourishing. So like reject impulsive desires. That's number one. That's a great one. Yeah. Because FOMO got to be at an all time high right now, right? Oh, think? yeah. You ain't missing out on shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think this is the, this is one of the first times in modern history that the, the, the FOMO that you feel, you can literally get online. Yeah, that's the only place you might be missing out on shit. It might be a versus battle, might be D nice DJing, might be somebody on Instagram live having fun, might be somebody beefing like yeah, last night, Young Thug and I, uh, uh, French Montana were. But other than that, it's like you can you can check in with all of that shit. Yeah. You ain't missing nothing. Yeah, man. Now you're right. All right, that's it. We did it. Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.